Some new teams, some old faces. Hello there, everybody. Welcome to the European Fall Cup. Hope you're all having a great weekend. We know some of our pro players certainly have. Uh, however, some teams, not quite so much, lads, as we are looking now to see who can get themselves into the Rotterdam Major. Hello, everybody. I'm Shogun, joined by Johnny Cole. And Stumpy's not here, so we have replaced him with someone yes. so much better. We've got Dazarin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we've upgraded. Yes. upgraded. We have upgraded. It. We're going to get Hogs some good chat. takes for once on this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, are you ready for this one, mate? Are you ready to show everybody just how much better than Stumpy you truly are? Yeah, at first I was going to say no, just for a general are you ready question, because I don't think you can ever be ready for an EU pre-show. But <laughs> uh, to be better than Stumpy, absolutely. Just put me in touch. <laughs> you already are. That was, the that was a great answer. Stepped Ten over. Out of <laughs> right, well, unfortunately, the bar to get to today was a little bit higher than some teams were anticipating. Let's take a look at how yesterday's Swiss went down. Mentioned some new faces making it into this one. Uh, Vitality making it in. Evil Geniuses making it in. And Aogiri with the ultimate redemption arc reverse swept out of the Swiss last time. Reverse sweep the Swiss to get in this time around. Um, Honestly, a fantastic day of uh, Rocket League. We're going to have a look at a few of the highlights uh, right now. Uh, unfortunately, starting, Cole, with what was maybe not the highlight of your day. Uh, Liquid not making it. They didn't. They lost it in the fifth series. Um, Liquid were never at their best, but Quadrant made them look particularly poor, I think. Everything that makes Team Liquid, Team Liquid, the passing plays, the brilliant solo mechanics, the ability to break down any defense, they had none of that against Quadrant, who seemed to frustrate Liquid throughout, and Liquid just kept falling for Quadrant's tricks. Even if they'd have three even... I was about to say even four players. That's not even a thing. Even if they would have all three <laughs> players on the goal line, they just think they could survive forever. Look, Johnny, so, coming I'll into this... I'll tell you back. Um, 
this, oh, sorry, Shogun, to cut you off there, but no problem. Wait, uh, you're just, straight I, to what I wanted to talk to you about. I, I just can't wait to tell everybody that Vitality's back is uh, pretty much happening in here, but not uh, good enough to beat BDS, unfortunately, who are also um, back at their best, looking like a terrifying version of themselves. But Vitality missed out in the top 16 last time. They missed out in the regional altogether, um, and I think that's got a lot of people underestimating them. Uh, they're actually good to play. Dazarin, uh, I'm just going to ask you the same question that's on the screen right now. Quadrant, last time we came over to this one, me and the whole European desk were kind of saying, all right, top five, top six is kind of settled for Europe. And Quadrant are there now, and not only are they now part of that top, are they a favorite, considering they got 3-0? You, you know, I think that they're building that case. I think that, you know, especially compared to the last event, making that top four, coming into this one now, I mean, they look super strong. I can see, again, a lot of people, a lot, big fans of Cash, I know some people think Relating Wave is super underrated. Uh, yeah, I can see Quadrant being a favorite, yeah. As we come towards the end of all of this, this was where the heartbreak uh, finally settled in for you uh, yesterday, Cole. But yeah, some teams that will also be very disappointed. I don't think we're going to get much of a chance to chat about oh. uh, them during this pre-show. G1 didn't make it again. They've been yeah. a team that we've been very impressed by on paper. And when you see them play, it looks solid. But again, mm -hmm. no top uh, positions for them. They and they they had a nightmare that you know we talk about you know, Geary reverse sweeping the Swiss losing twice and then winning three in a row. It was the opposite story for G1. They won their first two series looking great, and then they lost three in a row. And in their final loss game to Ao Geary, the massively uh, Spanish matchup there, disaster, absolute disaster for that roster who were you know considered by many, myself included, to be uh, one of the front runners to make top five. And you know I talked to many pro players about this as well in Europe. They all rate the team, um, but that's just how stacked the region is. Just you can't have uh, you know a chain of bad results and uh, you just completely fall off all right let's see what everyone is playing for today there is a nice chunk of cash on the line but the one thing that everyone really wants are those points to send yourself through to the major so much easier for us to read this season around for every single win you get you are now getting three extra points if you get and win the grand final there's an extra four from 12 to 16 really boosts your hopes and this is the reason why you need it because take a look at this europe is uh europing this is a lot of teams all in the mix this has not included the points that you add on for qualifying for the next event so those are still to come but we've got a lot of teams starting to climb their way through these ranks and a reminder once again top five are the teams that we will send to the rotterdam major in order to get there, you need to be playing well. You need to be bringing your absolute best. You need some top plays. Cole, Ooh. let's have a look at some of yesterday's top plays. Shogun, that was a lovely throw. Thank you for that. And the first goal was also a lovely goal. It was Joyo, the man who on Twitter said that he was finally feeling hot. His mechanics back as good as they've been since the, uh, the winter major in Los Angeles. He gets a breezy flick that time, maybe reminiscent of the overtime goal they got against Space Station Gaming, where Joyo got a musty in that overtime and he's always capable of the magic okay but look at number two you talk about mechanics you would never expect that this was coming from extra mm. even bt base did he <laughs> had him in 21 coming into the uh, last time he did a list i don't remember the list johnny does as well i know some people were uh, replying to the tweet with yep. that screenshot and yep. look he's gonna be listening now extra look fantastic there yeah, and this, you know, we need another extra highlight. Look at this. He steals the goal at the last second. Yay. Forget about Sticko's triple tap, lob over the goalkeeper. Look at extra moving into the bottom side of the screen. Complete goal seal. Not necessary at all, but he's just getting on the stat sheet he wants to be taking notice of. And as a, you know, uh, a resident goal stealer myself, I think that deserves the top player of the day. I always wonder with pro players, is Seiko annoyed there at all? A goal that good, yes. even by Seiko standards, yes. do you reckon he'd actually be frustrated? Like, absolutely, they'd yes. laugh about it, right? He's but probably saying, honest, "We've just proven that Extra's carrying the entire team." Uh, <laughs> how, how do you say "leave it, leave it, leave it, mine, mine, mine" in <laughs> French? That's probably what he's yelling in Team Comms. So, no. Team video. <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's not going to be happy about that. Uh, he wants his stats. He wants to be the carry. So let's have a look. Uh, as we mentioned, we've got some uh, new faces uh, involved today. Three brand new teams entering the top eight. We're going to have a little bit of a chat through uh, some of them, maybe discuss what we're expecting from them. How likely are they to make a, the true run today? I want to start here with the, the team that most people are going to be, well, pretty much everybody is going to be very familiar with. Team Vitality. It is 
an interesting situation they are in for this season because they have Zen waiting in the wings. I believe they didn't mm -hmm. even qualify uh, for the event two weeks ago. Yep. They are involved this they time around. It, yeah. What do we think of this team? Is this team legit? Are they just sort of a placeholder for now? What, where do you guys stand on Vitality? Oh, we're, we're not doing a thumbs up or something, but Johnny, you seem to like them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know we're not on it. <laughs> I know we're, I, I, there's not much else to say. I think they're good. You know, uh, I think uh, I've, I've heard a lot of good things about this team from scrims, from practice. They, their level like appears to be pretty high from the way that other teams in Europe talk about them and other players in Europe talk about them. But they uh, they just didn't get through the, the qualifier. It happens. I feel like every event we're going to see two or three teams miss out like that. The teams that you'd expect to be in top 16, but they're just, I think, 20 or so, uh, you know, really solid teams now. So if you have a bad day in the qualifier, you're you're in big trouble. This time, Vitality scraped through. They got in 3-2, um, but they looked phenomenal yesterday. Beat Oxygen, beat Moist. Um, they're they're into the, the quarterfinals uh, in great form. They did, but the weird thing is for Vitality at the moment, does it matter? They've got this guy called Zen coming in. You know, he's too young to play in the RLCS at the moment. He will be playing as soon as he can. Someone's going to be dropped. So it, it's a really weird dynamic, as you mentioned, Shogun, where they're sort of competing amongst themselves to not be the droppee. The bet, even I, if they win the next two as, events, there'll still be someone dropped. It's just an odd situation. As I want to know if you agree with me on this, because I disagree uh, with what Cole just said, where all of the points right now make the latter half of this season a lot easier. I don't necessarily see them as a Rotterdam potential to go to that one. I think the damage has already sort of been done there. Mm. But the less work you've got to do where you can come in with Zen, someone that people are so highly touting as might be able to take over the league, you got a chance of getting some championship wins uh, with that team, getting yourself over to the Worlds. Yeah, I, I see that. The thing is, though, it's so risky. Even with a lot of people rating Zen very high, there is still that possibility, since we know he hasn't played in the league, that, that, fall, that there could be a potential fall off. And all it takes is two, one or two bad events while he's getting acquainted with the team. And then Vitality are, could be out of a major contention in the spring, and they could probably not make the world championship. I think that uh, for Vitality, this is great for them right now where the team is currently. You can see it's definitely an upgrade compared to the last regional event. And I think that you're right. The damage is kind of done here for the major, but... Ah, I don't know. They could win. Yep. If they win this event, I think they, they're they they're actually favorites for the major, but... They did it they, in full last season as well. They could they? win. They no, they actually first. could. But and the full last season was a lot more convincing, would be though. Crazy. They would like start and then just sort of scrape through because no, they, everybody they, they decided they to lose do, on the last day. They kind of do have to win, though. Like they got to win this event. Luckily, I think they got the easy side of the bracket, so it true, really just comes true. down to the grand final if they can make it there, and that'll be a tough one. But if I tell you, you're not out yet if they win this event, which is it sounds crazy. A team that didn't make Regional 1 win this event. What are you talking about? But actually, <laughs> they played really well yesterday. I think they've got the form to beat anyone in this tournament. Um, it could happen, so let's see it. All right, Cole, I want you to highlight uh, one player for us today, mm. for us to be looking out for and why. I want everyone to keep an eye out for my boy Atachi for Carmine Corp, who's been the unsung hero for every team that he's joined into. And I think now that he's playing with Vatira in particular, who, by the way, was a massive carry yesterday. Yesterday was a Vatira heavy day. But normally the reason that Carmine Corp is so good is that Atachi is just so close to the ball. Statistically, he was the closest player to the ball among everyone yesterday. And he's always getting those little bumps, always getting those little demos, those nudges, just prodding the ball to his teammates. And I think at this level, it's a rarity to have a player that truly is happy to just pass the ball and just watch the chaos unfold. There's no ego to a player like Atachi. And I think because of that, people like us and commentators, we might forget to say his name as much as he maybe deserves. I don't know what anybody else thinks about Atachi or a sort of something to look out for from him, but just notice how many times he disrupts the play and gets that one key bump that opens things up for his teammates. I feel, Johnny, like we were in that position two weeks ago where we had the Moist versus Carmine Corp matchup, and obviously all eyes were on Vatira versus Moist. And at mm -hmm. the same time, you've got Atachi versus uh, Astral. Again, Atachi comes out on top, and we both got to the end of that match and just went, Atachi played really well, but but we really didn't have many reasons to talk about him during the gameplay because that's just sort of how he is. Like, yeah, you did good, mate. 
keep it up. Yeah, he, he did. I mean, he's. I think he's a very good player. You know, a lot of people are wondering why build a team around Itachi when you've just removed Astral. Surely build a team around Astral. But Itachi's at that level. You can build a team around him. You know, you need players like Itachi who are kind of like just trying to glue their team together. Now, yesterday, that glue was missing. I did mm -hmm. uh, think Karmi Corp played very well in the Swiss yesterday. I think they were a bit fortunate to, uh, to have gotten through. Um, you know, scraping a win over a, a weak team Liquid who also seem to have completely lost all their synergy. I can't so, disagree with that. Yeah, Carmen Corp not looking too hot. Uh, this event, last event, they really did surprise me and impress me. Um, but they're going to need to step it up. Daz, we're going to move on now to uh, our fifth topic of the day, Race the Rod. Um, this is the reason why we called oh you boy. in today. This <laughs> is <laughs> because we are so sick of every time we have good ideas and good reasons to think Stumpy ruins them every single time. <laughs> so, oh gosh. what we are going to do is we have all got, well, all whiteboards, uh, which we have put uh, basically the road to Rotterdam. So I am now covering the teams that are well behind, uh, that are not going to make it. Johnny has got the teams that will just about not get over there. Cole has got the checkered flag and the line. Amazing the finish line. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a little um, feather. Uh, checkered flag. Uh, okay. Dazarin as the true stumpy replacement does not have a whiteboard. Uh, he has got his amazing drawing on his phone, uh, which Hello. is... Uh, have you got it? Can we, can we see <laughs> it? Can I have a look at your... Uh... We must see the drawing, Dazarin. We must see. Yes, yeah, see. He's already got Genji on this. Genji. <laughs> Who joins Genji? Genji, they're in. They've made it. Oh, no. Yeah, no, oh, no, they're Genji. already there. That, that, oh, that, that's my, my that's my my line. <laughs> we have finish line call, and then we have Genji. They're already they already crossed. They are they are well <laughs> ahead of it. But we need to add five more European teams uh, to this one. Does anyone have one that we just want to say they're in? All right, we don't have to worry about this. We can just throw it on to Cole or Dazarin's board and say this team is going to make it quite easily. Uh, BDS. Even though they lost in the quarterfinals last time out, they looked really good again yesterday. They winning got Kami today, though. I plays. don't know. I, I'm not, I don't I don't any, nah, no one is in the Gen G category. I think Dazarin's completed <laughs> his section. Like they're the only they're the only team who have past the finish line so like uh, i think the teams that are close like the one the ones that have to go in coals you're probably looking at oxygen kc moist and quadrant for me bds i, mean, I don't even know They're, they should be there uh, well, but they have to win today we're not we're not just basing this on points though because if we are it's not even worth the discussion so it, it has to be a case of are any of these teams certain to make it in our eyes and surely team bds are still certain to make it they have one loss to quadrant in game seven and suddenly we're saying oh are they gonna make top five in eu yes of course they're gonna make top five in eu did you see the number one goal seiko was annoyed that his team had scored that's how good team bds still are i mean so i'm the number two fully goal. behind bds yeah. team has. i'm throwing him over there Oh, goodness gracious. Will I take him? That's the question. I'm not ready to do that. I'm not ready to do that. I think BDS, no. like, they, I don't think they're in. I don't think they've passed the finish line. I can't I can't put them there. I think the only team I could say are past the finish line. I mean, Oxygen, it's weird. They're out, but they are still, like, uh, in a really good position. Um, but I could see them. I, th I think maybe Moist would be a team I'd back most at this point because um, they're on the upward trend uh, right now. Quadrant as well. They're, like, the two teams who are, who are you know, got a good finish in the first event and they've done even uh, better so far this event um oh sorry KC I, kind I, of I fell off a little bit by the way um oh no i, 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 I just want to make sure that mine's uh being used because uh there there we go uh cole that one's for uh that one's for you uh i think we can all agree on this uh liquid ain't going <sighs> yeah uh there yeah i mean there no. i'd say i don't know I'd say they're in falling behind. I don't it's think they're on right. The I don't think they're right. Okay, what am I gonna <laughs> no do? No way. Like, you can't put some liquid there. They're fall I think they're they should be on mine. I think they should be falling behind. They're like I mean, they're they're not in control. Them, They'd have to pretty much win the next event at this point, right? To 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 make it. It's a no, long way know. away. Uh, you speak points better than I do. As far as my Semis, tiny brain. Semis would probably it. Do it. it doesn't it's speak the, sense though. But like, let me let me explain so here. When, when a lot of teams, it's the same thing's happening in North America, when a lot of teams are splitting points between them, the, the amount of points you need to get into top five is actually lower than if, mm -hmm. you know, just by the same five teams keep winning. So the fact that lots of European teams are kind of trading places, trading series, um, and it's kind of close across the board in the top 10, it does favor teams like Liquid and G1 who are on the bottom end of that mm -hmm. top 10 because there's a lot of teams close to them. So they're not actually, mm -hmm. I don't think they're that out of it yet. Performance-wise, yeah, they don't look great, but... There's a lot of talent I, in that roster. I, I would think he's going to be happy to make some putting Moist there. over on Dazarin's one. I, I think, think yeah, Moist is the easier yeah. uh, matchup match today. If Moist go Quadrant, surely go. 
You know, yeah, I think we'll, the semi-finals. Yeah, I, no, I think comfortable quarterfinals as well. And they are a team whose play style is very uh, repeatable. But, you I know, would they're not relying on a pop-off by any means. Them on Daz's board. I would, I would, would take you them. take them? I would take them. Yes. Over BDS yeah. though, or BDS as well? Because if it's yeah, not, no, it's suddenly got three they with them. Ahead of what? Both teams are ahead of BDS on points coming into this event. BDS have got. A pretty KC. difficult match against KC BDS, today. BDS should be on yeah. Cole's, Cole's board. BDS Listen, my board, board, my board is pretty to... small, okay? okay. It's, it's, a, it's a very small, like, board. Well, I don't have enough room to put everyone. Like. I, I am want... going to put them on this side, though. On the side of... Wait, the, the man's on the wrong side. <laughs> put, I wait, want... it's upside down. There we go. <laughs> I, want, I want Team Liquid and G1, by the way. They're falling behind, but they're not, like, completely out of the race. I, okay. I want them. I think that's okay. where they should be, if that's okay. I'm putting um, BDS all the way over here. Would you guys be okay if I put EG on mine? In out? No, but yeah, EG are still nah. I think EG what? should probably be falling behind as well because they're like in the event today. They're they're against Vitality, so yeah, I think EG have to go with me. There's, there's BDS right there, right at the edge of mine. I didn't have enough space to put the edge. Okay. That's how close to the edge. Shogun, yours is out the race. Yours should be like solary sonics, <laughs> you know, like uh, oh, no, monkeys. No, I'll put some really mean teams yeah, to start yeah, the I season, feel, but they're I not make, that they're make it top five. And you know what? I'm just going to have that for me now. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm not making top five. Pre-season Shogun was very wrong. Rest in peace, uh, And doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay. Johnny, uh, would yeah? you accept Vitality? Yeah, I've, I've already I've written them in. I, I agree. Thinking, I think I've got team. Go so following behind Team Liquid, G1, EG, Vitality. That's who I've got right now. Maybe space for one more. Um, but yeah, Where do we that's... stand on uh, on Tundra? Uh, I they're, think they're, they're in Cole, still here. Cole's board. Cole's board. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're close. They're, close been, to the they're being line. consistent. I, to the I think they're just line. before the finish line, right? They're, they're just before it. So if BDS are on this side, then Tundra would be there. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Wait. How are you going to get all that into your cameras? The question, like you've really stretched this quite I'll wide. I'll find <laughs> a way, Johnny boy. I always do. Okay, Tundra. You know, I reckon with the momentum that they've got from yesterday, you could even throw Aogiri like very tentatively oh. into Cole's one as well. No, not from not no. From that. Listen, from that. Like, they're they're well, the in yours, they're in yours. predictions, but Aogiri no, they. Aren't they? It, Ao Geary, listen, they're actually in a in a decent spot because they Moist like they've played Moist close before. Yes, they're against Moist today, but they've played them close before. And at worst, they're gonna be tied with like G1 Liquid after this event. They're gonna be uh, you know, ahead of uh, EG if EG lose. I think they're in a decent spot. Um they could they could upset, but All right. Should, it's, it's should we uh... I think putting them in yours because they might upset Moist is a bit rich. You know, putting them at okay, the edge I'll... of Shogun's because should, they might upset we, and then have a chance. Then? There we go. We've currently got, because we do need to I've got on. a massive amount of teams here. You've got too much power, here. man, is what you've got. I've got so, a lot of teams that's falling, falling behind. <laughs> falling behind. Shouldn't be allowed. Right. Uh, let, let's line all of ours up, shall we? Uh, is that's it. I feel like right mine again. <laughs> My finger is getting a workout today. Hold Shogun, you need, you need... Have you got monkeys? Uh, I mean, I can't. I, I could try writing it like You need this. monkeys. You need okay, monkeys. Give me a moment. Uh, yeah. I can't okay. really see, so. Oh, for goodness sake. This is a disaster. You can, you can have William's resolve as well, Shogi. I know you like him. We have totally <laughs> written going very well. None of us have Car <laughs> None of us have Carmine Corp, ladies and gentlemen. We've completely forgotten KC. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, throw Carmine Corp on, uh, on Cole. Cole. Oh, Cole. Cole. Yeah, I yeah, think Cole. mine as well. I think mine as well. Cole. Cole. Right, yeah, just imagine that like one there. A nice little KC. All right. Let's get into our predictions uh, for today, shall we? These are everybody that we are expecting to move on to our championship Sunday. Uh, shall we start with the person that's currently leading uh, our prediction competition Boo. that we are having over here? One point, Johnny is up by coming I'm winning. I'm winning by being 50-50. I'm exactly half right and half wrong. All right. There we go. 100% today, I'm confident. Quadrant okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. We're not really going to have to lean on this too long because uh, mine's looking somewhat similar, so I'm not really catching Ooh. up. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been a little Ooh, bit yeah. more... Oh, same. Uh, yeah. A banger heavy between BDS and KC. Yeah. Cole, uh, are you going to differentiate from us? I, as if I can remember, Shogun. I haven't got a clue. Let's hand <laughs> <it over. laughs> Let's see. Oh. Uh, no, you've got the same. Same four. Okay, we're all in the same boat right now. Dazarin. All right. Uh, big moment oh here for you, Bat Pal. Uh -oh. Are you in sync with all of us? Of course. It Come on. Nice. Let's, so right. four out of four. Four out of four. Okay. Interesting. It's good. Perfect predictions. Good uh, I feel like before we introduce uh, Stumpy, Stumpy did send his in, uh, we should also announce 
the punishment for whoever comes last. So the winner is going to uh, basically have a, a, a pie that they are going to throw at the loser. Thanks, James Bot. You gave us the idea back when you didn't think uh, Alpha Sydney were going to get a win back in season three. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look at Stumpies, shall we? Oh, it's it's just hideous. Oh. Yeah. Let's have a see. Oh, he's, going, seems to be he's going with KC. Okay, That's the big he's difference. He's going with KC. So today, either Stumpy like falls one more behind, or he he ties me because I, and we're all we're, we're all the same on three. No, Shogun, don't even worry about it. There is zero percent <laughs> chance. This is, this is the day that Stumpy do falls behind. Be. Yeah, and then and tomorrow then and the next you know, one, we're going to get even further back because. Stumpy's Stumpy. the sort of guy, though, to uh, if he starts falling behind in something, go, ha, ha, I'm not taking it seriously anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think BD is going to lose. <laughs> I'm going to get my no I'm not sure he's already taking it seriously. This is, yeah. this is terrible, Luke. We're, we're all here. We're, we're all united. We're all unified yes. in the pre-show. We've agreed that there are four clear favorites today. And then Stumpy's coming in with mm -hmm. Carmen Corp. And if he if he gets it right, we're all wrong. Oh. And so Stumpy's are we, are we really the only one who's right. By the way, Shogun, is that locked in? Is that are we are we that, that's, formally? That's a hundred percent locked in. You know, right. I think I think that we'd be pretty happy with that. I genuinely know all four of us will go out of our way to be right to be the one that uh, <laughs> actually gets to do uh, the winner award. should throw the pie. Yeah, when it yeah, throws. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Absolutely. But for the record, just to, I know there's probably some new viewers since last time we did this. We don't reveal our predictions to each other. So the fact that we've yeah. all got the same winners, yeah. it just shows how intelligent we are and how smart and stumpy we'll we are. Good. So we have to wait and see well, that all be right. Uh, then we can, did any you know, of us talk about sweep it. today? I don't think any of us predicted a sweep. No, no, uh, yeah, no, no, no sweeps, sweep. No. no. Sweeps. Our that one that we feel different. is the most likely to be a sweep. Italian G. Italian G. I don't to back me, that. I don't back it. To me, to me, uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't no, no, stand in. by it. Just because, yeah, go on. <laughs> Why do you think? Exactly, Dan. No, 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 I'm standing by it. I am standing by it. No, I, I've argued with Johnny plenty. I know how to stand my ground. Uh, I think that for me, EG, they just, they. I, I had them going into Swiss uh, when they played against Tundra. I actually had them kind of winning that matchup, and they just felt like the, the, the way they... They struggle really creating offense. Their defense is great, but creating offense for me just seems like it's really tough. And if they play a pressure team, if Vitaly is that high pressure team that we saw yesterday, I think that it's going to be the same thing with EG. They'll, they'll crumble like really quickly. And it, it could be a short series if they don't get it together. I, I don't thought... see EG crumbling. They're such a solid team. You know, that's what they're built upon. They are based on solidity. I think if, if Vitality do four over them, it's not going to be because EG are chucking goals away left, right, and center. Vitality are going to have to be popping off for that to happen. I I, I thought you, some someone was going to put EG there. I'm very shocked that we all went e, uh, Vitality, honestly. I thought that would be I, my I one that was really different. I was really impressed by Vitality's well, strength of schedule. Um, I, I yeah. just thought that they took on the better team. Speaking of schedule, let's have a look at what we have got for today as uh, we have got four amazing best of sevens heading towards your screens. We have got Moist versus Aogiri, Kamin Corp against Team BDS, Evil Geniuses against Team Vitality, and Quadrant, who have settled down as being one of the most consistent teams out there, three and owing their Swiss uh, bracket up against Tundra. So two teams that we kind of have on the outskirts, uh, Tundra especially, uh, really could do have a big result over for that one to really bolster their top five chances. But for now, we need to only focus on our first match of the day. It's Moist Esports heading to the field against A.O. Geary. Johnny, I had a chance to tune in to your stream yesterday, and I feel like you made some interesting points uh, about Moist, where really? you feel like no one's quite settled into the defensive role uh, yeah. <laughs> that on this team. Vatira obviously had that covered, but Moist are just letting in some pretty weird goals lately. Yeah, Vatira is one, just simply one of the best defenders in the game. So, you know, removing him from any roster would leave a big tires to fill. Uh, I think Astral is pretty well equipped to fill them if he, you know, commits to it. If he, you know, just tries to adjust a little bit, because he's usually, you know, first guy turning on the ball, very aggressive, first second man kind of play, not really known as a third man. But I think he's got the he's got the talent to do that, and I don't think it would really hinder him um, from making big mechanical plays. Third man can very often get involved in the play with a, you know, defense defensive air dribble, um, or or you know, coming in for the, the last play once their teammates have boost starved opponents. Something Joy and Rise are very good, uh, you know, good at doing. So. 
I'd like to see Azrael do that. I think he's the best equipped for it. I don't know if he will, though. I don't know if that's Moist's game plan. You know, three attacking players can work. It's just very, very hard to do. You need to be so, so in sync with your comms and so in sync with your synergy uh, to make that work. I've got a feeling that Ryze is trying to trend towards that position because when they played in the European Open, he was the one who looked a little bit shaky, especially against Carmine Corp. A couple of moments of hesitation where normally he'd be pretty confident going towards it. So perhaps he's shifting his game style somewhat. But you're right, Johnny, there's that, that not battle, but that sort of dynamic emerging within Moist of who will be the one that sits back just that little bit more. Do we, uh, well, firstly, actually, let's have a look uh, at what you guys uh, think at home. Let's see you all put your predictions down. Hashtag MST for Moist and hashtag AGR for AO Geary. Dazarin, we didn't have any sweeps down today. All of us gave AO Geary some games. Do you see this being a proper series, though? Or is this a couple of, like, token wins that AO Geary gets? Like, are they a genuine threat to Moist? Um, I no, in the in the larger sense, of things no. I think that Moist, if this is the Moist team that we've been backing, is this the one that has shown up and is starting to fill things out with Astro? This should be uh, a definite Moist win, in my opinion. I do think though, Aogiri has that potential to kind of throw a couple of curveballs at them, which is why I had them taking a couple of games. But for me, I feel like this Moist roster, when they when they all are on, especially from what we saw from Joyo yesterday, and also looking at Astro, I feel like. Astro still is kind of like getting a little bit more kind of acquainted with the team. It's really going to be Ao Geary trying to make their own, uh, play their own style here in this matchup, but more so just going to take over and take control. So it's just, for me, I feel like it should just be a moist win. I think that Ao Geary are playing moist just about at the right time. Moist is starting to become this this new version of themselves in a post Vatira world, but they're still having some odd results. They lost to Vitality yesterday, which, you know, their response on Twitter, they were very frustrated, understandably, about that. And Ao Geary are a team that have such balance as well. Statistically, they're all pretty close with who has the most goals, who has the most saves. Apart from VK Salem, who loves demo hunting, they're a team where any one of them can step up when it matters. So perhaps they'll be able to catch Moist off guard. That I would say is their, their best approach here. But the fact that it's a best of seven doesn't help them at all. You lose, you know, a lot of chance of chock and oaring a team against you. Well, let's find out what you at home think. Let's take a look at the percentages and roughly uh, what I expected. But you know what? 30% or so I think is a decent amount of respect heading yeah. over to A.O. Geary's way. Let's get ourselves ready then. Ready for our very first match. Mentioned earlier on, it is a best of seven. Will Moist finally start putting together that synergy we know they can get? Or are A.O. Geary legitimate challengers to go to Rotterdam? Let's find out. James Bob and Curly on the side. Thank you, Shogun and Corelli. This matchup is, a, is quite an interesting one. Ao Geary, a team that's a, a bit of an underdog, uh, just looking at the matchup on paper. But this Ao Geary squad, they almost made it to the playoffs last Swiss stage in the fall open. They were, started out 2-0 in Swiss stage and then got reverse swept out of it. And that reverse sweep started with a five-game uh, series loss to Moist. So this is going to be a big challenge for them, but they do have all the tools in their toolkit to get a win here against the Moist team that to looks mention, to be unstoppable. Not to mention, James, there's history between these teams already here in this season. They went to a five-game series where Aogiri almost reverse swept Moist, which is becoming more and more of a theme in at least one of their Swiss games throughout the first two regionals here. So these teams have already played each other quite closely. And we'll see how close this game one is. Rise. Trying to get the pass out to Joyo. Joyo rocking that Pele decal and yesterday. We saw him hit a breezy in it. <laughs> so you got to watch out for Joyo, who uh, was talking about on Twitter how much he's uh, been confident in his mechanics. Lately. Yeah, it's kind so. of... That's kind of scary, James. Honestly, you, you see a tweet like that come from Joyo, and, and if I'm on the other side of any of these teams, I'm saying, uh-oh, you got to put a man on him. You've got to keep up with his pace because Joyo, we saw especially uh, last season, halfway through it, Joyo could take over games with his mechanics alone. Speaking of mechanics, there's Rise with a double tap and Moister on the board. A huge double tap from Rise, and that's a nice pass from Astral. Astral, one of the best passers in the game, well known for his mechanics. But uh, man, he sure can pass. Great assist from Astral to start things out. And that was just over 
One minute into this game, we see our first goal. Dizzy. It, there's going to be a lot of talk about Wasted. Obviously, their history, their mechanics, their players, but uh, with Aogiri kind of coming onto the block, I really look at a guy like Dizzy. He's been really impressive individually. His recoveries and defensively, uh, the defensive positioning for Aogiri has been superb, and it's one of the reasons why they've been able to make these deep runs in Swiss and make it out to the top eight. He's kind of that new kid on the block, and he's fit right into this Aogiri squad. And this Aogiri team, they are a real threat. A dark horse in this event, I'd say. It's Dizzy. The newcomer to look at, and uh, Europe is no stranger to young newcomers, are they, Kirill? <laughs> no, plenty of them. I mean, we get we get full teams of them, is what it feels like. If you look at what is basically almost all of Liquid, uh, and that's just what Europe does, man. I don't know what to say about these guys. There's something different with the players that they come up with, and guys that you might not even hear about. You see them on the pitch, and they kind of make you wonder who are they because they're playing so well. Sailing. Dipping that off to the corner, getting it around Rise, who had the great start. Astral trying to 50 in the corner. Now Joyo will come and power that one through. Rise, the leak out, it pinches to the wall. Astral has it, trying to go into a 52. Go in the ball, oh. but Joyo, Joyo may, he might have been playing the 50, but didn't realize the buck came out on the goal line. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he was expecting the bump. Now two demos come out. It's just Joyo as the last man. He's getting bullied around. Ocelot had an open net. Astral was jumping in front of him. And Astral does come out with the save in the end. Some good demos coming out from AO Geary. They averaged the second most here in the Fall Cup at just over four a game. So it's going to be obviously a physical game from AO Geary already as Dizzy takes one off of Astral and he makes the save once again. It's Dizzy. Down to Ocelon. You know, we talked about new players, but Ocelon, a player that's been around for quite some time. I remember I first got to meet Ocelon back at DreamHack Montreal on GCRA, if you remember that tournament. Wow. So Ocelon has been playing at the highest level for quite some time. Having great success here so far with Aogiri, but now uh -oh. we see Salen getting bullied. Really no hope for that. I was on Dizzy's point of view. He just stopped driving. <laughs> yeah, he kind of knew what was going to happen. When he got Rise chasing after you, DK Salen had no boost. Tried to go for the in and out save to make it back down to Joyo. And maybe if he had boost, he might have been able to make it down. But perfectly executed there by Moist, Moist realizing they're in a 2v1 situation. And chasing after the last, last man is exactly what you want to do. And Joyo had no boost, so I mean, Salen, the only hope would be to to get around Rise efficiently, because Joyo wouldn't have been able to flick or do much, but I'm sure Salen wasn't really paying him much attention to how much boost Joyo had, and Ocelon will just turn and burn this one into the net. What happened here? For Moist, all three players are behind the ball here. It just splits between Astral and Joyo. I think Astral might have thought Rise was going to get a better challenge. And with the way Astral was uh, facing, he wasn't really able to make a play on it, which left it to Joyo, who was definitely not expecting it to make it that far. And Ocelon gets one of the boards here for Aogiri. And a game that seemed like Moist would have on lock now in question. Joyo, jostling, sailing over Rise. Astral will sweep in and clear it out, but Ocelon Keeps the ball in play. Joyo off the corner. Stizzy towards net. Astral, easy save. Salen off the wall, trying to get the pass out to the middle. We'll go for it again, but Rise will finish this all the way out. And we have 30 seconds left in game one. Moist holding on to a lead, but starting to appear thinner and thinner. A little jumpy there in the third man for Aogiri, and now getting caught out once again. It feels like a lot of the goals coming for Moist. It's just Aogiri mispositioned here, not in front of the ball, no one able to make a play. You can see Rise with a free shot and the corner of the box. Well, uh, it's Dizzy. I uh, had uh, just, it just, I mean, he was so close to getting that double tap. Needed a little bit more boost, but uh, you saw his teammates were playing as if he already had the double tap. And so when he missed it, that's all she wrote. And now Moist, they let, uh, they let Aogiri get within one with that misrotation, but Rise has had a stellar first game scoring two. And that one denied on the goal line as well. Great start for Moist.
Oh, absolutely. And it, uh, Johnny Boy said that Moist is kind of up on this on this uptrend. Uh, I agree partially. I, I think some of these series have been a little messy from Moist. Um, they still have that ice. Rise is still that guy to close out some of these series. And this is one of those series where I feel like if Moist is going to be the real deal again this season, they have to beat Aogiri. And they already have one time, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in the fall open, but it was very close in a 3-2. And I think for in this particular game one here in the fall cup, uh, Aogiri didn't come out, I think, as strong as I expected them to. It was a bit of a muted start from them. I think Moist definitely took advantage of the opportunities given to them with, with some of that open space and some of the expectations not really meeting reality on some of the touches there. So Moist definitely more consistent here in game one. Yes, sir. Uh, they were more consistent. Rise just putting some some shots on target. You also saw Aogiri. Um, th they had the double tap play with Stizzy, where everyone thought he was going to get the double tap off the sidewall. Didn't happen. That kind of fizzled their game out. But the the silver lining for Aogiri is that this is a best of seven, so they have a lot of time to to recoup and regain and get back into the series. But uh, Corelli, you know, you you said you have a few reservations on the analysis from Johnny Boy that Moist is on the up and up. We got to see them yesterday versus K Corp, the team that knocked them out in the semifinals of the fall open. And uh, Moist was able to take them down and it looked uh, it looked pretty commanding as well. And Joyo was a big part of that series. Didn't even have to do much in that first game. So if Joyo starts to get activated, they might make quick work of AO gear. Oh, don't get me wrong. You know, Moist definitely have that extra gear to click into. And what's funny is when I say something like that, they've actually performed quite well against most of the top teams. It's the team below that. You know, they almost got reverse swept by Turbo Clappers. They lost to Vitality, who admittedly has been playing quite well here in this fall club, cup. But are they the real deal? That's another question for me as well. Uh, so uh, for the teams under the top, I feel like Moist has been playing them a bit closer than I would have liked, at least for how comfortable I feel Moist should be playing against these teams below them. They're, they've been quite close. Moist have high expectations after their performance last season. Major champions, but lost a big piece of the puzzle with Vitira depart with Vitira's departure, but Astral so far has been looking good, stepping in. Now in game two, we're seeing offense come out from Aogiri. Stizzy will get another touch on that. It's going to make it awkward. Ocelon to the center of the field, but Astral will clear it out. Astral picking it back up. Ocelon, that tip, shutting down the attack. Zalen, tip high. Now going to the backboard. Astral will have an outlet pass and takes it, but it's cut off by Ocelon. And now the shot opportunity for Salen off the backboard. Joyo breaks up the play. Oh, you wish there was a little bit more power on that touch from VK Salen. Stizzy, Stizzy was there waiting to chase after it. It would have been a perfect setup as Moist was a bit caught out. The last man was stuck on his goal line. That's an opportunity you feel like Aogiri, albeit maybe just a half chance, got to come out with a better looking shot as Joyo beats one and two oh. now. VK still in oh. the third. Rise here's a shot for him, but Ocelon oh. makes the save to get back. And Aogiri just hanging on on their own goal line. Oh, that they there it, it was fortunate for Aogiri that Astral couldn't get out of the way of that ball. That second touch, the first touch was great. It would have dropped straight down, but the second touch launching it behind Joyo. Tough break for Moist. Now Stizzy with a 50. It's a good challenge, what? but Ocelon laid off. I think he was trying to fake out Astral, but Astral didn't bite. Both players turned off there, and now an opportunity for Joyo is going back post. It was never on target. Astral gonna get the dunk and pass VK Salen, and Moist Esports strike first. A yeah, big time dunk from Astral. Astral getting up very early, getting over Ocelon and off to the left. Calculated challenge from Astral. And it pays off. And that's kind of a risk with how Aogiri's playing their defense. They're sitting a lot on their own goal line, making a lot of goal line saves. And a player like Astral, he'll come barreling through and position himself to, to win a challenge like that. And of course, it was a tough position for Aogiri, but you got to be careful on how far back you let your line go, because eventually Moist just starts crashing the net. Well, and now another chance, but Astral was deep. Didn't get the shot. Rise, first touch. Trying to get the 50. Lands into a challenge, going for another challenge. But it didn't pan out. Salen, off the backboard, pass. The drop oh. shot, and Stizzy puts it off target. They had Moist reeling, but couldn't put that one in. 
That was a great opportunity again. A couple now here for Aogiri to put away. Stizzy behind that one. Just wide of the net. Maybe another opportunity if Ocelon can poke this one up. Stizzy has options. Just going to float to the other side. Ocelon and BK stealing both there. Everyone committed. And now a race back to transition back to defense for Aogiri. Ocelon, hard clear out. There's a pop. Astral was trying to get it over to a teammate, but ended up setting it up for Aogiri. Ocelon steals the corner boost, but Rise launches a hard clear down. Rise dodging a bump from Ocelon as well on the wall. Stizzy blocked by Astral. 50 from Stizzy into a light hit down. Salen will doink it towards net. And it has made things difficult for Moist. Salen, low shot, two go. Choyo will punch it downfield. Oh, there's a miss in the corner, but Salen will come out with possession. Pass down to Ocelon, and Ocelon got a piece of it, but Astral did as well and deflected it wide. These final moments, we've been seeing tons of chances from Aogiri. Yeah, seven shots, and maybe the eighth on the way. And I feel like a lot of it is VK Stalen working himself in the midfield, cutting out a lot of the clears. That's a great dunk from Astro once again. Tough ball to deal with, and VK Stalen again on the backboard. There to make a save, getting the job done on both sides of the field. Feels like he's the only one getting a touch on the ball right now as Ocelon gets a clear, but it's only as far as Astro in 20 seconds. Aogiri's got to go. Rise to Astral in the corner. Astral, little touch out. So well handled by Astral, who almost gets the 50 as well. Will steal the boost before getting demoed. But this game, I mean, last game, it was all Rise. This game, it was all Astral. Yeah. Astral defensively, and then offensively, the only goal that Moist got was off the Astral dunk. Well played. Okay. Thanks. Astral, I mean, why not? Have Astral tip it to <laughs> the ground. He was, just, he was just sitting on the goal line waiting for that ball to come out. And that's smart, especially when it enters zero seconds like that. I think uh, for Aogiri, though, boy, they had a lot of shots here in this game. Eight against Moist, who uh, they averaged the, the, the fewest amount of shots against them here in the Fall Cup. So to put up eight... Uh, is quite good for Aogiri, but with zero goals, you kind of left scratching your head. BK Stalen had five himself, and we talked about a couple of the chances that Aogiri had. They just could not put something at least dangerous on frame. And you look back at the scoreline, this is only a one-goal game. This one definitely could have been flipped on its head had Aogiri put anything near the corners. And, and then you also think about that opportunity that Stizzy had. There, you know, It was a pass out. Moist was caught out, and Stizzy uh, sailed it wide. So tough break there for Aogiri. They had some opportunities, had some chances that they weren't able to close out. And now, you know, you don't necessarily have to break the glass and smash the emergency button yet, Corelli, but we're getting close to that point for Aogiri. Oh, definitely. And and again, I think what's painful for these first two games is that I think Aogiri could have won both these games. And I don't just mean that, oh, yeah, they had a you know little tiny percentage chance. No, I think they had a good opportunity to win in both these games, especially the second one where it was just a one goal game and they were out shooting their opponent. They were out shooting Moist. Uh, I, I, it's disappointing to walk away with no goals. And I think that's the biggest thing because they have great defense. The defense has actually been quite good. It's been dicey at some points, but who's has it here in this series? Moist also having those champ or those uh, miscues as well. So for Aogiri, it's really about just converting on the opportunities afforded to him because they get plenty. See if they can find that extra little bit to convert only one goal so far for Aogiri in these two games. Offense has been a struggle. Astral, who dominated last game, trying to start things out this game. And even in the first game, Astral lovely passing to set up opportunities and goals for Moist. Joyo didn't get the touch he wanted. It went right to Salen. We launched it back. Astral leaving it. Joyo blocked out. Stizzy with the mid boost. Ocelon back up to Stizzy. Stizzy off the ceiling. Trying oh to my. get the read and he got wow. it. He just blasted it off the ceiling. I was expecting a potential double tap, but no, it just goes right in. Yeah, I think that was his intention, especially when he sees Joyo here. He knew he had to clear Joyo, but that touch was so perfect. The last man just didn't even realize how perfect that touch was going to be. And in the end, it just kind of goes straight into the net. And those are the you know half chances 
that we were talking about for Aogiri. When you get some space uh, in front of the box on the opposition side, put something on target. And Stizzy certainly does that. And look what happens. Good things happen, and they're on the board first. And that's a big boost for Stizzy. Stizzy, maybe not the start that he was hoping for, but has started to kick it into high gear, that first goal. And this first goal of the game for Aogiri, will it prove to be enough? Dylan, the challenge. Astral back to the corner. Blocked out by Stizzy Rise. The bounce clear, it goes right to Ocelon, and it's fortunate for Moist that Ocelon only had about one small pad worth of boost. And that one deflecting off Salen, but Salen with the corner. See Stizzy and That's Ocelon in the middle of the shot. Off the backboard. Whoa, whoa, Stizzy! whoa! Stizzy! Oh my! Stizzy came close, but not <laughs> close know. enough. I don't know if I've seen a double tap off the post like that. He almost got it through. But now here comes Moist the other way. BK Salen to slow things down. And boy, with a two goal lead. Feel great. And now it's tied up with the pass from Joyo. Softens it up to Astral and a tie game here with three to go. Uh, Joyo reading the defense perfectly, saw Ocelon so far back, and then uh, knew all he had to do was beat that first attacker, Astral, in the right position, and he did not miss his mark. Great series so far all around from Astral. The team effort for Moist. Rise, there's a double commit on the back line from Aogiri, Astral. Around one into an air dribble, but Salen able to shut that down. TBK Salen making a good save here. Joyo, no options as Astral's trying to get a good dunk. Ocelon and Stizzy. They've got Rise isolated, but Rise does a great job to slow this one down. Can Aogiri poke through once again? They've been knocking on the door multiple times through the last two games. That's a good pick. Here's Joyo, the last man. Stizzy brings Ooh, it down. Looking block. for the bomb. DK Stanley gets it. It's Stizzy. Dunks it through. Ayo Geary in the lead. <laughs> it's wild how much we see this play in RLCS now. The lead block play. Joyo didn't get bumped, but got zoned out. And Stizzy. And you could even see Stizzy was, was running away from a demo attempt from Rise. Well done from Ayo Geary. Like I said, Corelli, it wasn't a break the glass moment. And is. they recover nicely. Stizzy might as well get a hat trick. Well done. And, and this is the young gun that I think Aogiri wants. You got to have a finisher. And with a hat trick, you just mentioned it. Five shots to his name as well. Perfectly placed, as that one could have very easily been saved by Moyes. Aogiri now 3 1. And all of a sudden, it's looking very familiar here as they. You got two minutes left to hang on, but they've been looking a lot better than Moist here in game three, and they're looking to extend this series. Astral, 50. Leads out to rise. There's a demo. Nice challenge from Joyo. A pinch out. Flies with the corner. Will be able to take over. Ground pinch. Phelan back to the corner of Moist. Joyo jumping off the goal line with a little piece of it. Thalen back to his own corner. Astral going to pinch this around. Oof. And Ocelon, good thing he got a piece of that because there was a moist attacker waiting for that to come across the goal line. Yeah, that was communicated. Rise was waiting. And now Astral tried to get a touch through VK Thalen. As you can see, Elgiri's very happy with throwing numbers at the ball. This one came out to Stizzy. He was not ready for it. Did not expect to touch right at him. And why would you? Yeah, it's a bit sloppy for Moist. And here comes Ocelot trying to get him up. He does so. Moist scrambling in their own box to get a hold of this one. Stizzy wants to take it himself. He got bumped on the follow-up. And he didn't have a ton of boost either. He's still on the ball here and lets VK Stanley come through. Joyo beat to the ball by Ocelot Astral with the save, but his precious seconds ticking away. As Moist not only need one, need two. Just to force overtime. It's a late flip. And it was well defended, Ocelon. Great defensive positioning there. And Aogiri looked like they have firm oh. control over this game and might what? as well get another one, almost slotting it. But I guess it just wasn't meant to be for him. Yeah, VK Salen, I think it, it looked like he had a flip reset, didn't use it. Ocelon, it, then it looked like Ocelon was going to come in and take a shot. Moist were very confused. 
And now nobody hitting the ball there. Jorby would call that a wifty wifty. Seven seconds left, and Aogiri starting the march back against Moist. Here's another <laughs> one for Stizzy. Four here in game three for Stizzy. These look stellar for Aogiri. But did you see the pass? Look at this. Oh, the backflip. Waiting till the final moment to use it, sailing off the ceiling, taking advantage of that late flip. And Aogiri, they pummel Moist. All four goals coming from Stizzy as well. And that has to be a little alarming for Moist and Moist fans, Corelli, to see uh, offensively how dismal that game was for him. Well, these, I mean, this is what I was talking about, James. You had asked me earlier, what is it about Moist that you know worries me? It's games like these. It's not dire for Moist. Moist, they're still in the lead in the series. They were decent here in this game. It wasn't abysmal from Moist, but these are the types of games that I just kind of feel like they should be closing out a series like this. They shouldn't be taking their foot off the pedal. And I feel like I guess a team like Aogiri, uh, Moist should should be 3-0-ing. And they've gone to game five once before, having to stave off the reverse sweep against Aogiri. And it's, like I said earlier, at the closing moments of that game, it's starting to look very similar where Aogiri picks up that pace. They take over the game. They take control. Uh, and it felt like Moist was just playing the back foot for most of that game. And I'm, I just wonder how much of that was uh, Moist not playing well and how much of it was uh, Stizzy just scoring on <laughs> Stizzy. Four goals, having a breakout game. And that uh, that's huge for A.O. Geary. They were, you know, you could tell in the, the previous game too, Stizzy was so close to putting something together. This time, finding the pieces and making it work. A.O. Geary getting the win before things get dire. And so now if you're on Moist, uh, you, you kind of feel like they have to pick up that pace again. Uh, a lot of their opportunities that came early in the in the series came from crashing the net, the speed to the ball in the opposition's uh, final third. Astral, Astral, Astral. He's been a huge playmaker for Moist so far, and he's been quiet in that previous game. An interesting change. Joyo no longer on that Pele Octane. It says switch things up. For a Fennec, and a lot of time, I mean, it's the same hitbox, Corelli, but sometimes it just is, is the mental. Oh, and there was a team bump. Oh my goodness, look at, this is comical. Did you see that? What? Look at this team bump, this is hilarious. Oh no. Fork? Oh wow. <laughs> and they went far too. I mean, you can see, Joy was, was the it entire was, half. It, <laughs> it was, it was, it was comical. That was, Unlucky. It, it almost seemed like slapstick humor. <laughs> Draw that one up to be a little unlucky there. Boys, uh oh, they might be piling Ooh, on. Rise, are. second touch. Boys, this is this is the mark of a, a, a good team, Corelli, is when you recognize that your opponents are struggling a bit, and you have the ability to land that low blow. That was a low blow right there. Aogiri, despite that game win, have had a real rough start in Game Four. Yeah, that's definitely not the way you want to start. Here's another opportunity for Joyo in Ocelon with a great read. You got to stop the bleeding here. If you AO Geary go back to that high paced offense, gets dizzy behind the ball. That's a great air dribble. VK Stalin puts one towards net. It's an easy save for Joyo in the end. And Joyo once more getting a touch to clear this one out. Stizzy going for the block, trying to get that read off Rise, but Rise saw it coming. Stizzy, backward pass, good shot opportunity. It bounces off the crossbar and out. That is a must score chance for Aogiri. They're still on the ball here. Stizzy might work some magic. VK Stalin has an opportunity, but it's too high off the crossbar. Moist fourth man coming through huge, and now they might turn it on its head as Joyo tried to get a dunk through the defense. And once again, James, this was the criticism we had of Aogiri is they've got to convert those chances afforded to them and they come out with nothing and I think two great chances there. Yeah, it was. They have to convert those chances. That was what was troubling Aogiri in the, in the first games, Curly. That was what made the difference in those games was a bit of inability to capitalize on the moments that they had. Astral going low. Ocelon will pinch it out, back pass attempt, and Salen will get a piece of it, but that very easily could have been flicked around. 
Ostalon driving over the mid boost and getting it. He'll be able to keep on this attack, but Astral, the double tap, bouncing it. Stizzy handled it, handled it well. Stizzy still on the wall. 50 out to sail in the middle and a quick shot. What? Stizzy, I thought was going to steal it, but Salen recognizing that all the moist was out. And this has not been the first time we've seen this between Rise and Astral. Yeah. No one being back. And that's why I have such a, a, a shocked comment every time I see a goal like this go in for Moist. They traditionally have been so rock solid in that rotation. And now a couple times, like you've mentioned, Aogiri has poked it through. We saw that miscommunication uh, a game ago where it just split a couple of players on the Moist side as well. And everyone was a bit too far pushed up from Moist there. And way too much space given to Aogiri to take that shot. Now another shot opportunity, but Salen was a bit too wide on it. Didn't even make contact. Now looking for a bump on Joyo. Joyo jumping around. Salen for boost. Not the best clear. Ocelon helps him out. Stizzy into an air dribble. Joyo oh, he's got it back and Stizzy ties it for Aogiri. Uh, Joyo couldn't even jump. He didn't even have boost to work with here. Zero in the tank. He picked up a pad, but Stizzy was going all the way to the house. And Joyo couldn't make a play. How big has this Dizzy pickup been for A.O. Geary? He's been phenomenal here against Moist. Four goals last game. The tying goal there, Stizzy. You know, he's having a great series so far. Gonna take a full series of work from Stizzy to take down Moist. But so far, A.O. Geary seemed up to the task. Rise, the pinch, out to Ocelon. Ocelon flip reset. Joyo got a little piece of the ball. Astral trying to force the issue. Rise towards net. Stizzy clearing it off the goal line. Joyo, nice catch in the corner. Set up for Astral. Astral decides not to go. It proved to be the right call. Now cleared out to the other corner. Rise. High ball. Everyone on Moist was low boost. Had to retreat. Astral trying to make players miss in the corner. Stizzy. Out. Joyo doesn't dive in. Instead, waits at the midfield, and now we'll lose possession. Rise. For the ground pinch, didn't hit it. Rise. Playing it slow. Going for 50s. But the patience proved uh, to not pan out. Well, there's a lot of patience there defensively. Now they got to make a big play here. Astral off the corner uh -oh. of the frame. Astral again denied. Stizzy this oh time. Ocelon making the save. And Stizzy with a huge clear. That was a dire situation for Ao Geary, but they hold on. Still not over yet. Astral, the tip around one. Stizzy to the wall. Won't be able to get there in time. It's hit back to him. He misses. Sailing oh. backwards. The Fetty launches to the corner. Astral pinching it back in. Still panic on the defensive end for Ao Geary. Can they hold on? These final 10 seconds going to be tough. An onslaught here from Moist. Flip reset. That one's coming out dangerously to Rise. Oh. He's playing it slow. Rise going to put it home. Four seconds left. And Moist in the lead. It felt like those final 10 seconds. That might be enough time for Moist to finally break through. And it was. Rise delaying the shot. Winding it up and finding that far post. So much patience. Such a mind game in that box. Both teams were playing each other on who was going to take the touch and force the tackle. And Rise, so patient behind that ball, earns Moist a win here. Such a smart play from him. And again, <laughs> how many times is Rise going to score with like five <laughs> seconds on the clock as the game winner? And that guy does that way too much. Well, you know what, Corelli? I think uh, I think we're going to take some time. Time out here for Ao Geary. <laughs> And I, I think it, it, you got to call a timeout here. And I, I hate to be a downer, Corelli. I really do. But you feel like uh, if Ao Geary was going to be able to pull this upset off against Moist, that that game was a necessary piece to the puzzle. Yes. But how close it was, especially uh, because I don't think this is Moist's best day so far. And for Ao Geary, they have a huge opportunity and they've been given a lot of opportunities as well to take uh, some pot shots at the Moist uh, side. And I think they've done a great job 
at that. Stizzy, it's been a great offensive force, but that defense cracking in the final seconds, you would love to see an overtime there at the very least because it feels like Aogiri just barely couldn't hang on for the final seconds of that like, game. They, they just needed a possession. I mean, it, <laughs> overtime it, it at least puts you back even. Yep. Uh, you know, they, they were so deep in the boost trench. They, they just couldn't dig themselves out. I think for Moist, this was a, a kind of a return to form. This was something that I was asking for is crash the net, keep the pressure on, rel relentless attack, especially from Astral. He's cut that rotation so much. Johnny Boy mentioned it on the desk as well. I think that's a really good point is that he likes to turn back into that play. That's what gives all of the Astral teams that we've seen him on that kind of unrelenting pressure. And he's doing it here against Moist because he's so smart in knowing when to turn back around cut in front of that rotation and that communication and trust between his teammates is really important as well to recognize that it's happening and you can see what it does for a team's offense moist shot after shot opportunity after opportunity and possession is the key word to hold on to that ball for so long that's what gave finally moist the opportunity to win and curly you, i mean it you really do start have to start you got to start focusing on the major and and getting to the major and with a, a European region that has been, I mean, especially in this event, so chaotic for Moist. This is massive. They are going to not let off uh, let off the gas whatsoever. One more game win and they'll be securing that top four spot, locking in those extra points, and it makes their chances of uh, going to Rotterdam that much better. You want to go to land? You got to beat the big boys. For Algiri, this is the opportunity. They've got to dig deep. This is not going to be an easy matchup. And coming off that uh, timeout, you hope that they can bring something new to the table. Astral right now passing to Rise. That shot directly at VK Salen. As right now, Moist looking to just take back over. Astral, long air dribble. Joyo trying to pinch. He does get it, and it's in! What? Joyo! That was lovely! My guy's tweeting about his mechanics. Look at his pinches. As he gets that, actually came off the wall. He, he just waited for his flip. Yeah. It was like the most close double tap you could possibly do off the wall. Yeah. But I mean, you could just tell from the way he was setting it up. That was what he was going for. Oh, absolutely. And it worked out. And, and <laughs> for Moist, that is a demoralizing goal for Algiri. And oh, hold on a second. Now Gary gets one back here. Ocelon puts it away for the pass from Stizzy. He's just working up the sideline. Oh, how demoralizing was it? Ocelon able to slot that one through and, you know, more confusion. You see Astral and Joya both covering the same exact spot on the back wall. It seemed like there was a bit of confusion, but boost issues for Moist. Gonna have to figure that out. You wonder, Karel, is it because wasteland is so dry that Moist is struggling? Oh my, where'd you get that one from? You just come I just up with thought that? It. I, did. I, I haven't thought of that one before. That's good, James. And and did, did, I believe, I believe though that they lost Aquadel, so or maybe they won. I, <laughs> well, yeah, it would be. A, it would prove you wrong if they were to win here. So we'll see. We have to we have to get a stat right, on that. We got D Rec on it. We got D Rec. They won. They won. So it, it all makes sense. Joyo. In the corner. Now Astral laying off. Still gets you see just sailing waiting, saying, okay, all right, <laughs> someone, feel free oh. to come. Stizzy the drop pass. And Rise almost had an angle there. The defense from Ao Geary caught out just for a moment, but Able to get back in time. Miss from Stizzy. A little pop. Astral getting a piece of it. Stizzy back to the corner. Stizzy staying upfield. Miss from Rise. And Ocelon will launch to the other wall. And gets up to beat out Joyo. Joyo didn't get the mid boost either. And that allowed Ocelon to get it on his way in. Which allows him to go for this ball here. Now off the ceiling. Dangerous. Ocelon almost reading that. Joyo trying to clear that down. Now a chance for Stizzy. Stizzy, he got 50. Rise with an important challenge there. That will relieve tons of pressure for Moyes. And Algiri's line was really pushed up there. It was a full court press from them. And that was great work for Moyes. You got to give him credit defensively. Done a great job to push off 
that Algiri offense. And they've been a little stingy. They like to have their first fan on Algiri really chase the ball around uh, inside the box. They kind of let him work. And they're very patient to see if he wins a challenge or just forces a tackle and make the ball kind of pop out for them. So you can see how ball chasey they get in the box, and it works quite well. Now Astral almost had a rise there at the top of the box, but out here he does well to deal with it. Astral pop around two. Pinch pass attempt. It was a nice ball, but Ocelon was expecting it to be right. And now pinch out. Joyal almost in position for the shot. And now Salen. Big lob, a miss oh, from Astral, him. What? and it's in! The long ring shot from Salen finds its mark. Now I'm curious if Astral, he comes up and he tried to press the ball, but then the shot just came too quickly. He couldn't get there in time. I thought maybe he might have just went into it a little bit late, but no, he reacted just in time. It was the perfect shot right over his head, and now Geary sitting in the lead. And, and that, oh, those are always really tough situations as the third man when your teammate puts a pass off the wall. You know, it's like you have to do that calculus in the moment of do I go for it? You know, is it better to go for it or, you know, do I rotate back? And now wow. Joyo! He ties things up for Moitz when it was starting to look pretty bad. But they get their feet back under him, Krill. Tough bounce there for Algiri with that touch from Astral. And Joyo was perfectly positioned to, to read that bounce when it was so rough, and a quick response from Moist puts us back at twos apiece. Yogiri. Oh, there's a big bump. Yogiri had a close game that they dropped, Corelli. They're gonna need this win here. They have their backs to the wall. And that one almost going in, rebound opportunity, and that's dropped by Joyo! Hat trick for Joyo. And a shot that was very weak here. Stizzy was just trying to read the play, but Joyo does a great job to go under him. And with Stizzy at his last man, that one's going to bounce in uncontested. And Moist come roaring back here in game five. And they're looking to take this series in the final minute. See if Valgiri has anything left in the tank as their offense has been stifled. Moist have kicked it up a notch. They clamp down on the offense of Algiri. We have not seen it for the last couple minutes. Well, there's a big pinch though. This could be awkward for Joyo. Stizzy not able to get a piece of it. Joyo even getting his own boost now in position to receive a pass for Astral. Instead goes for the bump. Astral went for the flick and the attack dies out. Astral over Ryze had pre-jumped. So that dies out. Stizzy to Ocelon. Ocelon slowed down by Ryze. who's back to the ball. Tried to get the flick, but it wasn't enough. Now Joyo off the sidewall, last chance. There's a double commit from Aogiri. And now the lead from Astral. Final seconds, kick away, and that's gonna do it. Moist in five games. Take down Aogiri and are moving on to the semis. Moist, get the job done. And honestly, James, that felt closer than a 4-1 in some of those games, but you can't deny, again, the consistency coming out from Moist is what really led to this victory, especially in this game, where you saw response, when you saw in-traffic goals from Joyo, poised from Moist here on Wasteland to come out on top. And they do a great job of taking down a dark horse team here in the Fall Cup. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, there was... Some questions in your mind, Corelli, around Moist. You, you had not 100% bought in to Moist being uh, back in top form. What do you think now after seeing him against Ao Geary? Well, I still think they're going to be a top team, but I do think, you know, these types of games are ones that I get a little weary, worried about. They did fine. Look, it was a 4-1. They came out on top. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be a moist hater. All right. Uh, they did. They got the job done, and I know that they can get the job done against some of these top teams as well. They already have in their Swiss stage. So, um, yeah, I do think they're going to be a top team for sure. Well, moist. They're able to get that win. And, uh, you know, it was convincing 4-1. to one, So we'll see how deep... They can go moist onto the semifinals. Ayo Geary knocked out. We're going to go to a quick break. And when we come back, we have the French matchup. BDS versus K Corp. Stay with us.
Moist Esports able to get the job done here in five games, advancing to the semifinals, uh, matching their performance from the first split, first event here of the fall split here in Europe. And can they go farther? We'll find out in a moment. I'm joined by Joyo. Joyo, sir, how's it going? Yo, what's up? What's up, everyone? Ah, good to see you, man, here. Walk, walk me through that match from your perspective. Uh, I mean, I don't really remember matches, but it was all right. I mean... <laughs> We managed them well. I don't know. It was a it was a weird team to play against, but you know we did we did well against them. Well, I, I, I wanted to talk uh, about game three there, where uh, you guys are up by two. It seems things are pretty well under control. Game three comes out, they they win by I think three goals or two two three goals there. Um, I, I feel like from from a fan's perspective, you're you're when you're watching RLCS, you tune in on the weekends, you you see a team get an early lead like that, and then a, a game in the middle of the series seems to go completely the other way. It can be a little confusing. What what happens with you guys in that moment? Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. They just go blood chase. <laughs> so is it it's it, it's it the other team creating the, a new dynamic? Were they adapting to you, and it, it was it was a slow a slow change on y'all's part? I, I don't know. I literally don't know. The series was so weird. I mean, they're a weird team with like demos and random pre jumps and blood chasing and stuff. But we just played how we wanted to, and it worked. Yeah, well, you, you were able to get it done here. Probably nice to have the weird teams not in the bracket anymore. <laughs> Talk to me about Europe in general here. I mean, we've been seeing a, a lot of depth uh, in, in A, and we've already seen um, uh, many of the teams that made it into the top eight in the first event not make it back here in event number two. How do you feel about the field of competition in Europe right now? I mean, Europe's weird. I thought it'd be like really top heavy at the start, and there wouldn't be many teams breaking in the top eight. But I mean, it seems like some of the top teams are the fraud now. So I don't know. Well, we'll continue to understand it better uh, together as these events continue in the fall. Uh, Joel, I don't want to keep you too long here, but we got BDS versus K Corp in the next match. Winner of that advances to play you in the semifinals. Who would you rather see? Uh, I'd like to beat Carmine twice. Why not? <laughs> beat Carmine twice. Get revenge again here, folks. Joel, oh. thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Good luck in the semifinals. Thank you very much. And Joel looking uh, looking like he's uh, still confident, maybe in a statement that you know the it's top heavy. We heard him say this before. Cole and uh, Daz joining me here. Oh. Daz, do you believe him? Do you think that you know that the region is still top heavy, uh, and maybe it's just because uh, I don't know. He said some top teams are fr frauding out, so well, maybe he's changed his mind. He I also know. said that he just doesn't know on a lot of stuff, so I don't know if he knows <laughs> really. Like we got to wait for him to kind of figure that out. But yeah. uh, you know the way it, the more start playing they look like one of those teams that are set to take you those top spots like everybody has predicted everybody else has kind of been moving around and shaking up shaking things up a little bit so we'll have to see how the rest of the day goes but for him and for ao gear uh in this matchup against ao giri i mean it just seemed like they were just in control for that that uh, entire match ao gear threw out a, a couple of punches back but it just wasn't enough i had that series going to six and they finished in five yeah, Cole. Uh, uh, looking at our bracket, I mean, it's it's making sense. I mean, the we see a couple of these new faces make it into the top eight, but I think it's probably expected that they end up just stopping at that point. Yeah, I mean, so far the EU uh, penultimate day has gone pretty much according to what we all expected. I think a four-one is about what most people would have predicted there. I think the most interesting thing we learn in that interview is that Joe apparently goes into some sort of trance state when playing Rocket League, where he remembers nothing of what's just happened and yet scores spectacular goals time after time. So that's something to learn for anybody up and coming in the Rocket League world, I guess. Um, I think it's always difficult with EU to say that it's, it's going to be top heavy because there's always about 15 teams that are going to break through. So yeah, it's, it's a risky thing to say anytime. Let's talk about our next matchup then. Joel says he wants to face off against Carmine Court, but they're going up against BDS. Two of the top dogs in the European region about to duke it out. BDS though, last time Daz, this was where their journey ended. And I know that they want to make sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah, for, BD, for Team BDS, you know, they ended up dropping in the quarterfinals of the last event to Quadrant. Fortunately for them, Quadrant is on the other side of the bracket. That being said, it was a Game 7 series. And for BDS, I'm sure that was not where they wanted to go out at all. I feel like this team... 
uh, wants to get kind of back on that top spot is the defending world champions. Come on now. But for Carmine Corp, I mean, I think that with this addition to Vatira, they look like a threat here too. It's going to be a close matchup, but I still, I'm still on that BDS train right now, yeah. Leaf. Yeah, I think I'm the same as you there, Daz. I think that BDS showed yesterday why they can never be counted out. It's, it was a champion's performance from them. World champion's performance going 3-0 and in the EU Swiss. I've got a horrible feeling they're going to sort of take out some frustrations on Carmine Corp today. Because I don't know about you two, but I didn't see enough from Carmine Corp to suggest that they can make it to a finals again mm -hmm. based on yesterday's performance. But I mean, how often do we see it where a team struggles in Swiss and then turns it on in the playoffs? So it might be the complete clean rewrite that they need. Well, what do you think, chat? We know you have opinions. Let's get the fan vote rolling. Hashtags in the chat, BDS and a KC. Uh, as for us, we both, we know what your guys' predictions already mm -hmm. are. So let's start us up there. I want to say off the bat, um, I, I'm doing something weird and I'm I'm going to agree with Stumpy. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Leaf, why is he, why so did you, let you him get his little goblin claws in your mind? Well, someone needed to represent uh, his no, terrible takes. No one needed to represent oh, his terrible takes. Oh, we didn't. I thought we had to have the weird <laughs> one on the show. Mm, oh, mm, mm. okay. Well, can you convince me why I've just made a terrible grave mistake, Cole? No, no, do you know what? No, I, I, it's not a terrible grave mistake by any means. Okay. I mean, Cole, uh, the yeah. finalists from last time out, and I'd love to know why you think they're going to beat BDS there. Yeah, well, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, we've seen BDS, granted, they win a lot of the game fives, but they've been going to game fives so much especially in this this season coming into this this new season so I, I to me it feels like there's some sort of roadblock that might get in their way again and we saw it they dropped out in the top eight they didn't make it to top four in the last regional mm. i have something to go off of they didn't make it past this point That's so with, with mm -hmm. k corp they they've been looking like overall a solid top four team every time so i have to think they're gonna end up in a top four and bds didn't end up in top four so well you make I a good know. point you make a good point but at the same time there's a little bit of uh, an argument against that from how k core played yesterday that was a little bit of what cole was talking about too they went round five to a game five against team liquid now keep my team looks a good team but there were a lot of top teams in that round five that honestly probably shouldn't have been there i think k corp's one of them especially if you're going off that basis that hey you know this team was uh did really like extraordinarily well in that last event i'm just not seeing the consistency there that being said i do think you have a point i think we're in for a very close series maybe maybe even seven games here i mean i'm hoping so chat let's let's get let's get you on the board here too can you back me up can you back me up? Yes. What? Wow. Back me. To be fair, oh, that's the, the army, of course. Yep. I forgot yep. that right. they yeah. had yep. an army of 16 trillion French people who were like, Carmine Corp, yeah. To to count for bias and to count for that, like what is the error rate? What what percent do we take off to I mean, make sure this is an I think this is a lot like, I've ever like seen actually Carmine Corp. Wait, 50. They got an army, army, army fam. That's a, yeah, that's a whole army. Well, hey, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, overall, we get a good series. But we do have James and Corelli in the Skybox waiting to cast this match for you. Two of Europe's top, Europe's top dogs duke it out with BDS trying to avoid the same fate as regional one. And Kate Corp looks to use his bracket to clinch Rotterdam. Corelli, Team BDS fell at this very point in the last regional event they got eliminated by quadrant the other team that went undefeated in swiss and the question on everyone's minds is is bds still the best team in the world the defending world champions need a good result here they're losing that good faith from losing that world or winning that world championship excuse me and a lot of people start, you know when people start to question it you get a little concerned for bds and while they haven't had an abysmal result quite yet this would be a good way to get back into top four and to kind of quiet some of that discussion beating KC, who were our previous regionals uh, grand finalists. And it's not going to be easy, though. These teams know each other all too well. And to be fair to BDS, they look quite good here in this regional so far. The last time they played, they were not so lucky. That's a huge save for Seiko on the goal line. How did he pull that one out? <laughs> I I don't understand how that was kept out. Seiko, we will need the frame-by-frame -frame analysis of that save. 
That, that ball looked like it completely crossed the line. I didn't even see any of it sticking out. That was crazy. And the way he had to approach it, too, that's so hard to keep out cleanly. That's usually an own goal. Monkey Moon now going to the backboard. No boost. Won't get a second. Much extra there for the captain. And BDS on the board. This is a heartbreaking start for K Corp. Exotic just missed the backboard read. Just missed it. Unreal. Extra easy goal for him. Team BDS. They uh they're smiling right now, Crew. You don't want to give easy ones to BDS because they know how to lock down a game. And that one might come back to haunt KC here as we venture through the first minute and a half of game one. Monkey Moon and Co. looking to play out with some space. The last man in Exotic there to slow things down. And now Vatira denied as KC looking to put on their own attack. There you go. Weaves his way around, launches it towards net, barely kept out by Vitira. TBDS, they're so quick, especially Seiko. Seiko, the one who cleared it off the goal line, almost getting another goal for BDS. Extra taking it airborne, going for a bump, leaving it for Monkey Moon. That shot going to be saved by Itachi. Hey, you can see how far back BDS sit with just that touch of Carmen Core just sitting on their own sideline. BDS went all the way back behind half field, let one man go just to slow things down, but they're so conservative on their approach. That's why they're such a tough team to beat. You got a guy like Monkey Moon in the backfield locking things down, but everyone pushing back. They're all on the same page defensively. You have to always go through all three of them if you want to score. And now Monkey Moon a touch. No one's home, but Tira can't make the save, and BDS double up. And that has to hurt Seiko launching this out. Vatira at the mid expecting Itachi to go. And then Vatira, I mean, there was a moment there where Vatira picked up the mid boost and wasn't boosting back. Trying to go as fast as he could. But I mean, once you're supersonic, you can't go much faster than that. Tough break there for K Corp, who, uh, you know, it's, it seemed like they were going to have a good start. It seemed like Vatira scored, but that that first uh, save from Seiko was an omen yeah. as to how this game was going to go. Yeah, it certainly was a precursor to what was going to happen. And now this is a scary situation. I think for KC, you're going to look towards BDS to start slowing the game down, only taking chances that are high percentage and just not giving any opportunity. You're going to have to be really creative on the K Corp side. If you're gonna break through, Seiko with a flip reset, looking for the dunk and denied. But now a full court, court press comes out from BDS. Extra's not gonna get back to that one. And K Corp will move down the sideline. Seiko taking over. Late flip, demos Vitira off the ball. Extra pass out to the middle. Monkey Moon started to drift closer to that corner. Had he stayed mid, that would have been the perfect play. Extra got it out into a dangerous spot. Now Vitira. Whoa. We'll save that to the side. Demo again from BDS. BDS has been ruthless this game. Exotic, a pass across. Vatira, first touch. Do a 50, rebound out. No one's going to be there. BDS currently out shooting K Corp 9 to 3. And a lot of those came in their two goals where they just put on the pressure and K Corp. It normally does average close to eight or nine shots a series, a game, excuse me. That's been really stifled here. Three shots to their name and really not showing a lot of pressure or control right now. I think BDS again, kind of showing why their defense is so good. Itachi though gonna drop it down oh. off the post. And still K Corp can't break through. And that, that has to hurt. It's like getting kicked in the same spot twice. K Corp, that one just off. Gets the silver. Oh, whoa! Seiko. Seiko with the elevation on the ground pitch, getting his flip reset. That was oh. a highlight. There's no way anyone's going to save that one. Not with the speed he just pinched it at. And why does he have so much space to come down inside of the box? That's a little head scratching from K Corp to allow Seiko. You know he can get the pinch there, but to allow him to come down cleanly is 
just mind-boggling in, in watching that one back. And a three-goal lead, and surely the win here in Game 1 for BDS. Complete control and annihilation of K-Corp here in Game 1. I mean, you, you could tell that uh, after those first few moments for K-Corp, they were bent out of shape. And then Seiko comes along and breaks them all together. Team BDS, that Game 1, you you wonder how a team can bounce back. That was really rough for K-Corp. The, the save yeah. off the goal line from Seiko. The miss from Exotic on the backboard read. Which normally, you know, is, is a, it's a read that these players will make, you know, 10 times out of 10 oh, most of the time. Look at that replay of Seiko making that save so close. Wow. Oh, my. And then to have Monkey, Monkey Moon had so much faith, was coming in to sweep that off the line. There was the back four. You know, that was just crazy. Uh, yeah, some insane stuff. And, and to be fair, I think BDS also got the benefit of the post in the fourth band there a couple times. K Corp were, were that close to Tachi's shot there at the end that came off the, the left side post as well. Slow start for K Corp. No doubt about that. I think that's very plain to see. I think BDS came in ready to play today. They are very locked in. I don't think they made a single mistake throughout that game. Uh, and that's a scary thing. When BDS comes locked in, you don't have to get the beast going. You've got to step up your game. K Corp, we're looking at you right now. And we're saying, what else do you have? Because game one was not it. Game one, tough for BDS. And you know, Seiko, <laughs> Seiko and Vatir both, I believe, uh, in the running for Rookie of the Year. And this is, you know, an award that they're fighting for. I saw a little back and forth on Twitter, Corelli, where uh, I don't know if you saw the same thread with Seiko and Vatira, but there was some chippy words. That were shared between them. <laughs> and I think what? that that shot from Seiko may be settling some of the debate. Yeah, yeah that's that's the fun thing about uh, the French is they are very aware of each other's accomplishments and they're always trying to one up each other. That's the com competitive nature of the country of France and all their players in Rocket League. They are so competitive and they want the glory. They want the accolades. They want to be the best. One of these teams currently is the best as they proved it last season. We all know that Kate Corp with a bit of time here, could certainly be that type of team. And beating BDS, again, would be a great way to show it. I mean, and you, you say BDS is the best, but Corelli, you have to remember, they fell out. You know, they fell out relatively early in the last event, uh, to be, according to BDS standards. So there's no guarantees. BDS certainly want to lock in as many points as they can for that Rotterdam Major, and I think Pretty much everyone expected, you know, if there's one team in either any of the regions that will make it, it would be BDS. So they need this result here. That shot off the crossbar, rebound the extra, and the rebound is good. The rebound is crucial here from X. So you've got to put this one away from the players. There's a lot of traffic inside the goal. And Itachi went all the way to the back as he was trying to make the initial save. An extra slots it to the right side. BDS able to take advantage of the chaos in the backfield. They strike first. Yannick. 50. Field pass. Itachi. Out to the corner. Now Itachi will stay in the play and gets his wheels back under him. The tip doesn't get around extra. Extra with the 50. Exotic had a good one as well. Wanted to flick that, but Monkey Moon closing down the angle. Now Monkey Moon flip reset. It's high, and Vatira hits it off the ceiling. Extra back down to the corner. You can see a bit of panic there for a moment, but Exotic able to settle the ball down. Yeah, it was a great first touch from Exotic away from all the pressure and into space on his own side. Was able to collect and then move out. Very smart from him. Now the pass across. Vatira finds Exotic off the post. Ball up there for Tachi. Oh, no, it's oh. not going to be safe. What? How did that not go in? Monkey Moon saved it off his post. And a free clear for him as BDS get out. It is K Corp curse. They still haven't scored in this series. I mean, you could make a montage for how many close calls they've had. But still scoreless. K Corp. That has to hurt. I'm not going to lie, I thought it was in off the initial save, but it came off the inside corner. Monkey Moon using the frame to get that one out. My goodness, and this has got to be frustrating for K-Corp. I mean, they've had plenty of great opportunities here. It's not for a lack of trying. 
BDS's defense have just held strong, even by just a threat here. They've been able to deny K Corp on every single one of these very creative and tough attacks to deal with. And this is a nice play right into a bump, but Extra was recognizing early the fact that his teammate was getting bumped and was able to get there in time, clearing it out. Now Seiko, self pass off the backboard. Itachi breaking up the play. Monkey Moon pinched back to the corner. BDS tightening the screws. K-Corp managed to break out Exotic. No boost to keep that play going. Seiko, first touch, trying to get a touch to the corner. There's an infield pass, but no one from K-Corp there. You see K-Corp very scrambled. Here's a free opportunity for Vatira. Flip reset, dog. It's gonna drop in for Vatira. K-Corp finally get on the board and they do it in style with Vatira. Look at the space he's afforded. And finally, a good look at the last man isolated on the goal line. Dumps it in and we're tied. Oh, and getting that over Seiko as well. Vatira, a highlight play. Maybe that is the turning point for K Corp. They had many chances, very easily could have won game one. Now game two, they tied up late, final minute. Itachi, hit by extra. Now Monkey Moon towards net, a panic play, but Vatira able to keep the ball close. Yeah, I've not been impressed with some of the double commits coming out from K Corp, their defense. I don't know if they're not calming or not trusting each other, but you said it too, James, a little panic there on a few of these attacks. And, and some of them are a bit innocuous for BDS. It just seems like miscues coming out from K Corp. They're not punished there, but they absolutely could be if it gets any worse as Extra tries to poke it through. Vatira with a good clear or relieve the pressure. Exotic had Itachi waiting on the far post, but couldn't get the ball to him. Vatira turns, launches it high, but gets demoed. Now to Monkey Moon. Mon Monkey Moon testing the backboard defense. Exotic was maybe looking for Vatira. That pinch will send it all the way downfield. Itachi, early jump. Monkey Moon trying to get the ball to the ground, but Vatira keeps it in play. Extra. Now down to the corner, and it touches. We've got overtime on Aquadome. Good boys here from K-Corp to get to overtime. They've threatened a couple times now in those waning moments to break through the BDS defense. they got to do it again. Certainly don't want to go down 2-0 here in this best of seven. Tachi also trying to push it through. Vatira looking for options, trying to get it back across. Extra will poke it out with Seiko's help. And BDS get out. Vatira, the last man, has to race back. Tachi there does get a touch, and BDS will boom it back to the other side. Here's Extra looking for two, and Vatira once again on the back wall, making a touch. And that was well done by Extra, bailing out of the double tap instead, trying to get the dunk, and got the touch back to Seiko. Now Itachi, air dribble pinch attempt. Stay on the wall, gets help from Vatira. That ball hard across net, Monkey Moon, didn't get much of it. Now an open opportunity. Itachi launches it dead center. And K Corp get the game win in game two, and they tie up the series. And this is important. The good communication coming out here from Itachi and Vatira. Vatira leaving that one for Itachi to wind up a bullet to the back of the net. Great work from K Corp to stay in this series. It's not going to be easy here against BDS, but they proved they could take them down. And that is a huge regain for K Corp. K Corp, I, I mean, you, you you could you could feel for him, really. But how many chances yeah. oh, they yeah. had, how many did not pan out, but they kept on trucking. And that really the, the turning point of the game was the flip reset dunk Matira had over Seiko. Right. And they have to just keep chipping away at BDS. It takes those types of opportunities to break through. Look at that save coming off with of both the crossbar and the post and a good drive there from Itachi to put through. You can see he's hyped up about that. That one meant a lot to them because you, we know you could just see it on the face cams how badly they want to beat this BDS squad and to, to drive home one like that, especially with the way that game developed. Uh, it's got to be feel good for K Corp. Certainly K Corp with the uh, with the response there, the hype from Itachi, as you saw on the cams up there in the top right. Itachi, the game-winning goal, massive for K Corp, and it has been, you know, we're, we're only two games into this, Corelli, and you can already tell it's going to be a brawl. It absolutely is. I mean, 
you, you see not only uh, in the attacks from K-Corp, but you can also see the defense from BDS has been so stingy. I keep mentioning how hard it's going to be to score against BDS. I mean, statistically, they've been one of the hardest teams to score so far on so far in the Fall Cup. Second in goals against at 1.25. Second in opponent shooting percentage at 15%. Holding their opponents to 15% shooting percentage. It is not easy to break through these boys on, on orange. Yes, many people's top pick, but you know, if, if if K Corp, I mean K Corp could have won game one if things went well for him. Maybe that first goal from Vitira that was cleared off the goal line from Seiko. We saw many chances. Team BDS go down here. That's two top eight finishes. That really puts them in jeopardy at even making the Rotterdam major. This, uh, the importance of this series cannot be understated. K Corp already making it to the finals. They're sitting pretty on points. Zachi will leave that for Vitira. Nice demo from Exotic. Also got the mid boost on that play. Vitira taking it to the air. Flip reset, oh. pass down. But Itachi didn't want to dive in. Seiko clears it out. Now the pass over to Seiko. Great oh, tackle. 50. It's the way down. Exotic clears it off the goal line. We saw Exotic miss the backboard read. Well, that play right there makes up for it. Redemption defensively from Exotic. Massive brain from Exotic. Like you mentioned, initially not getting the touch, but then slowing it down, reading the kind of stutter step there from Seiko, Seiko to make the save. That's tough to do, staring down Seiko in front of your net. And he saves a goal here to keep it tied. Tachi trying to redirect that, wasn't able to get there. Challenge from Vitira, who picked up the corner boost, but gets demoed by Extra. Now that pinch high. Extra, they need some help from Seiko. You saw it. Tachi was trying to reverse, but couldn't. I think he was just trying to mess him up. Good. I think he was just trying to mess him up. He saw his team was trying to get a touch there. It's kind of a smart play. Now Exotic. Look at the backboard. Itachi laying to Vitira. The shot. It's weak, but it goes in. It was right in front of the defense. And Vitira sneaks it through. And this was so good. Itachi waiting. And you saw Monkey Moon was, was expecting a potential shot wow. from Itachi. And the shot comes out from Vitira. Infield pass working out. And K Corp, they have the lead. We're approaching the halfway point of the game. But K Corp are starting to stabilize, getting these consistent chances finally dropping in their favor. I think there was a bit of a mistake there from Extra. He was kind of running up his post a little bit coming into that one, and it snuck through both Extra and Seiko. But you got to think Extra not positioning himself perfectly further inside of the net cost him the space, and now Itachi costing a bit more time and space for BDS as K Corp double up. And you see Monkey Moon, a bit of indecision there. Seiko diving in on that challenge, but essentially eliminated from the play. He hit it right back into uh, into a top or into to Exotic, who has been having a great game. Exotic, the patient play defensively and now offensively in that corner, just waiting, letting Seiko hit it off of him. Exotic playing very well. And now BDS have got to go to work. We're going to see a different type of BDS now. They've got to press a bit harder. They can't just get the lead and then play quality defense and game management. They've got to the press down the field. You look towards Extra and Seiko to be those guys to create the opportunities with Monkey Moon following up. Here's Extra, er, Seiko, excuse me. Monkey Moon into the tackle. BDS would love to score with a lot more time on the clock here. A minute 40. The way K Corp's defense has been playing. They've been tough to break through here in this game. Exotic going high, looking for another touch. Follow up from Itachi, saved by Extra. Matera getting bumped. His last back, that's gonna make things awkward and exotic. Look at a double tap save, clears it out. And we saw Paycourt get shut out game one. Looks like they might be shutting out Team BDS in game three. Only three shots for BDS. You're looking for four here, but extra too close. The pass is a bit behind him as well. Seiko and Monkey Moon now trying to combine. A minute left on the clock. BDS, they've got to go. And Exotic is having none of it. A great clear down the sideline to run more time off the clock. Exotic, a stellar game. Seiko 
threatening the flip, never using it. Made things tough for Vitira, but still, Gate Corp, they have this two goal lead. They're happy to burn this time off. The extra little touch, throwing off extra shot. Yeah, that was a huge opportunity. 30 seconds left. Pass was intended for Seiko. And now he's looking back to Monkey Moon. No one connects. Extra. Can't get it across. 20 seconds now. BDS, they're controlling it in the midfield, but that's all they're getting. And now Vatira to clear it out. And into the BDS corner. Extra trying to get that ball past mid. Itachi shutting it down. Monkey Moon around one, but Itachi standing and waiting. And this time ticks away. K Corp, after having a tough game one, win two straight Corella. And they looked good here in this game. Uh, you know, for all the compliments that I gave BDS about locking down the game, playing great defense, uh, this one is the compliments go the other way. K Corp, defensively exotic. He didn't score a goal here, but defensively came up huge. Set the tone here in game three with that save in front of Seiko. And BDS now going to be taking a timeout. They did not like the way game three win. And I don't blame them because the way K Corp played to shut them out, to put up two goals, and to really not allow BDS, especially in that final minute, with how much control BDS had, James, they weren't really able to put on a shot. I don't think they actually ever did. K Corp shut them down before they even had a chance to. Yeah. And, and I mean, it was those little efforts. Itachi breaking up extra shot on net and uh, all around K Corp getting confident you could tell even, even in game one they they were a huge threat but uh the, the goals just weren't dropping now they're dropping and this game particularly you you know said you know exotic didn't score a goal but that play in the corner where he let he he just waits patiently let seiko hit it into him he was able to put that out into the middle and get a goal and then also the double tap save from exotic also the save from exotic where seiko was trying to mind game slow things down but Exotic read it and was able yeah. to get the stop. Uh, not all big plays are goals. And Exotic reminding you of that. I really like what we're seeing from both teams here in this timeout. Uh, look at how much command both the coaches kind of own with these teams. Everyone turned their chairs, looking around, paying attention to their coaches. Maybe not Itachi's looking away right now. But on BDS, they were all turned and looking at their coach, listening as he was, you know, yeah, there we go. There's a good shot of them. Look, they're all listening to him. There's a lot of command here from these coaches. They're well-respected with their players. And clearly the coaches have a lot to say here in this timeout. And I don't blame them. There's a lot to break down. And I think for BDS especially, there, it was a little frustrating in that previous game. And so I, I like seeing that from players. You know, there's a lot to think about here. Let your coach do a little bit of the talking, chime in, you know, add your points, and then go in and commit to a game plan coming to this next game. We'll see if they come out with one. Generally, timeouts work. I believe Stumpy was going on and on about it last week, Corelli, how he just hates it when a team that's struggling does not call a timeout because more times than not, the team calling the timeout wins going into the next game. So we'll see if it has that effect for Team BDS who are trying to fend off K-Corp from moving to match point. See if BDS comes out with a different game plan. It's been, that previous game proved tough to break through the K-Corp defense. And right now, K-Corp doing a good job just to keep the pressure on immediately. Here comes Exotic Ooh. denied by Seiko. That one was at least on target. Next should have a lot of boost to deal with it. If Seiko doesn't boost straight down and get that block, really, I'm thinking that was a K-Corp yeah. goal. It might have been. Extra had no boost there. I don't think he could have gotten to it. And Seiko, large first touch. Vatira staying behind the ball. Challenge again from Vatira, but it's back out to the middle. Bounce out there. Extra to his own side while now in the corner. Out to Vatira. Vatira the smoke, Whoa. it doesn't matter. Monkey Moon has X-ray vision. How do you see that? There's a demo in front of him. You're not supposed to be able to see Monkey Moon. And yet, making a save on the goal line, but if this job's not done yet, gets a bump, needs another save, it's extra. Just at the bar of his own net. And K-Corp are pressing here. Vatira trying to go to work, and Monkey Moon running out of boost will just lob it downfield. And K-Corp restarting from their own side. Extra. 50 by Itachi, and now Exonic launches it to Vatira. Vatira testing the backboard. Itachi, slowing things down in the corner. Seiko with a pop-up, Monkey Moon there. 
We'll lob it upfield. Extra. Low boost. Monkey Moon, that's all he can do is tip it high. Extra turns. The shot is blocked again by Exotic. Oh, man. It's a defensive battle here in game four. Who's going to break? Another pass down to Seiko. I think he wanted to bring that one down and away. But K-Corp sweeps the ball away from him. Now Monkey Moon. Time and space. Look how much time Monkey Moon has. And Vatira does well to defend. Hold and now on. Vatira back the other Hold way. On. It's wide open. He's got no boost, but he's got a goal. And K-Corp will take the lead. Oh, I just don't understand. E extra. Where, where was Extra going on that? We'd have to see again, just going all in. But that was a bit strange. I, I don't know. I, I didn't have enough angles to break that one down. It's, there, there, it's not very BDS-like to send so many people that far up and to not have control of the ball. And K-Corp did a good job just, I think, catching him out. But you're right, I didn't see how far Extra went up and why he was there in the first place. As he was the closest to being the last man. And K-Corp benefits as they sit with a one goal lead at halftime and and before that play we saw multiple double commits by k -Corp. And, it, and i mean maybe it was just throwing off the positioning game another save exotic backwards able to keep that one out and now itachi rolling it by one Vatira with possession the 50 itachi backflips and couldn't keep the play alive Five shots on BDS, five saves. Make it six shots on BDS, six shit saves from K Corp. Now Monkey Moon trying to go through as well. It's now seven as BDS has just been denied every single time they've gone for the net. Extra with no boost, having to deal with Matira in front of his face. Seiko will get a good demo on Exotic. And less than two, to, two minutes to go. BDS still hunting for their first. Tachi up against Extra, pinching it out to the corner. Monkey Moon slowing it down. Seiko, the tip up. Extra, trying to double it. It's no good. Team BDS, the defending world champs, they are in a pickle right now. I need something to drop. Is it Seiko? No, denied again. Just over a minute now. Monkey Moon. I've got to get something going here. Seiko's got options to his left. Going to take it himself into the corner. This one going to pinch out. And BDS again forced to restart from the midfield. Looking very reminiscent to the ending of the previous game. Where K Corp just locked down on their own side. Did not allow any shots coming from BDS. This one, left side, denied by Exotic. Exotic, the guardian of the K Corp net. And no one and nothing is permitted entrance. Monkey Moon, his own backboard. Stopped by Vitira. the tip out, Itachi. Off the ceiling, the fake, going for a ground pin, didn't get it, trying to get the bump. Panic now for BDS, extra, clearing it out, but it's not too, it's not too far, extra. Or uh, Exotic, rather, getting bumped by Monkey Moon, and that was key because Exotic, if he turns for that... Oh, hold on! Oh, we got it! From Seiko over Matera! How did he manage that? Oh, that was so crucial for BDS. You could see Monkey Moon diving into the box, and then Matera tried to get the save, but Seiko was still coming down. A great dunk from Seiko, and BDS tied up with 15 seconds on the clock. That is an impact play. Itachi over one. Oh, Itachi's got the ice. Oh my, Itachi with all the boost in the world to work, work with and the backboard read. Nine seconds on the clock and the response comes immediately from K-Corp. Oh my. Right when there's, I, I, I said impact play from Seiko. Now that <laughs> is an impact play. Last chance for BDS in field, but the demo comes wow. through. Extra was ready for the pass, but guess what? King Court had other plans. <laughs> that is soul crushing from K Corp. And while BDS might have closed out game one in controlled fashion, it's heartbreak for BDS here in game four. And K Corp putting on a defensive masterclass, denying just about everything from BDS 
And then to put a shot away like that from Itachi, that's how you do it to demoralize your opponent. And what a game, what a series we have on our hands. I am in shock, Corelli. The, the, the first game that was in favor of of BDS, I was thinking, man, they, they're, they've, they're just going to get K-Corp's number. It was heartbreaking, that save on the goal line. Then following that up with the, the multiple chances that were close, but not close enough for K-Corp. But they really have turned a corner. After losing game one, winning game two in overtime, that Vatira flip reset dunk play over Seiko. That was the turning point in the entire series. And since then, K-Corp's not let off the gas. Itachi has had a phenomenal series as well. Really, everyone from K-Corp having yeah. these iconic plays and, and standing tall in very key moments. Yeah. And now one game away from knocking BDS out in the round of eight once more. Yeah, you, you look back to that exotic save a game ago where you had that poise in front of the net with Seiko. You look at obviously Itachi with that last goal, Vatira's uh, goal on the last man a couple games ago to kind of get K-Corp going. These are the types of plays every single player, like you've been saying, has been an impact player for K-Corp. And they have really dominated the series after game one. Game one was a little slow from them. We criticized them a little bit, but in game five, they're almost able to put another one away. Game five, K-Corp looked to be in command. Itachi was on zero boost. That gave Seiko enough time to get back for that. Batira taking it low, extra. Breaking that play up. Seiko with control. 50 out to Monkey Moon. Monkey Moon getting demoed. Monkey Moon having a quiet series. One of those players that many people pegged to be best in the world, especially during their historic run last season. Claiming the championship title, Monkey Moon was a huge factor in that success but has been quiet this series. It certainly has. Again, like I've been talking about, you kind of look towards Extra and Seiko, and K-Corp have done a good job of denying those guys. You look back to just the ending of that previous game where Extra uh, was waiting for the pass across and then it was just demoed, removed from the play completely. No hope for BDS to put together any attack. I think a lot of the credit here in this series goes to the K-Corp defense. The offense has been great too, but that defense has really withered away at the offense of BDS. Here's an opportunity for Monkey Moon, but again denied by Vatira. So quick to recover, even with the net, looks falsely open. They're able to recover back. Monkey Moon over to Seiko. Seiko double tap ball. Vatira getting a hand up and tipping it away. And now Vatira backflip hit off to the side. Great defense from Vatira and K-Corp. Seiko over to Monkey Moon. He tries to double tap it off the corner, but that's again shut down by Vatira. A lot of control coming out from BDS, but we've seen this before. K-Corp deny, deny, deny. And so far, they certainly have two saves on the two shots of BDS. They've been quite consistent in that regard. Extra, try to get a bump. Denied by Vatira once more. As you can see, K-Corp starting to split at the seams. Exotic, bearing that ball out. Exotic again, infield pass. Seiko, didn't get the ball elevated over Itachi. Another 50. Vatira demos Monkey Moon outright, but now the shot will come in. Exotic, getting back just in time. Ooh, Gets the mid boost, the little delay. The demo. Down, air dribble. The extra touch doesn't get around Seiko. Seiko defends it well through the smoke. Yeah, I've seen a lot of offense come out from K-Corp, but that was the scariest chance I think they've had. Only two shots to their name. To the four of BDS, Itachi's dunked. It's Matira, who's been so crucial on the backboard here for K-Corp. That time on the ground, getting an important touch to get K-Corp out. Oh, the delicate situation. <laughs> this tournament life for BDS. And there's a miss from Monkey Moon! And Tanti with the punish! What? Monkey Moon has been so clinical defensively, but that ball was just put behind him. He had no chance at it. What a fantastic touch from Exotic. 
And yeah. Hachi, again, is just the guy there to clean things up for K-Corp. How many times has he been there in this series to put away the ball that's been popped out? And now Extra has a chance. He'll put this one on target off the crossbar. Immediate response from BDS. And that is a regain. Beautiful pass for Monkey Moon. And BDS stabilized, and you're right, Corelli. Monkey Moon on that play before was probably just expecting a 50, and once it bounces behind you like that, there's really nothing you can do. And a great regain this time from BDS. And the low shot, trying to get forced through from Exotic. Extra against Vitira. Vitira to Itachi, and a good challenge by Monkey Moon. Be down, Exotic, the slow play. 50 by Monkey Moon, Itachi, now to the corner. And field pass broken up by Itachi. Atira, again 50. BDS's challenges, their 50s, have been quite good. Preventing K-Corp from breaking out. Oh, oh no, that, 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 oh, oh, what? Oh, oh, that has to hurt. An own goal from K-Corp. What happened? Why did Itachi even go for this? He had plenty of time just to leave it for Vatira. He didn't have to go. They must have felt the pressure. Disaster! Disaster! For K Corp here in the final 30 seconds. That was tragic. Now Itachi trying to make up for it, but not going to work out. Exotic, the 50. Itachi rolling up the wall in the corner now off the ceiling. 50s it over to Exotic. Exotic. I hit off the backward. Monkey Moon doesn't make the read, but it's still cleared deep into the Carmine Court path. And that hit off to the corner Got doesn't it. end things. Itachi with the pass He's into Vatira. Vatira off the backboard. Seiko gonna be there. And now Seiko trying to end it. Exotic keeping the ball in play. Pass out to the middle. That pinch down to the ground. Wow. And oh Team my. BDS Bend off elimination. It was oh a bit my. precarious, but they do. <laughs> Timeout. <laughs> I thought you just spammed in chat. All caps. All caps. Timeout. And I don't blame them. That's got to be a Tachi just calling for the timeout as well, because I, I, I would be tilted giving up a goal like that if I'm a Tachi. And obviously he didn't mean to, but that own goal. Wait, what are you it. telling me he didn't mean to? He, he's, he's saying people don't want to score on their Wait own Wait a minute. Really. <laughs> Crazy concept, but wrong net. And for Itachi, yeah, I think you got to take a second to cool off there. Uh, obviously, Coach uh, having something to say, but I think this timeout is really just to calm down because that was, as I mentioned, a disaster for K-Corp. What, from what was a great game here against BDS, a grueling game, a grindy game, to give up a goal like that is, is just painful. Don't don't let BDS get their foot in the door because especially if you remember last year and even RLCS X for the most part, Team BDS even when they're down in these situations where they have to reverse sweep, you know, or win three straight, whatever it may be, they find ways to do it. And uh, Team BDS, they're the defending world champs, Corelli. They still have a lot to be fighting for with the, yeah. the top eight placement they had last time. They can't afford to go out this early. And they're playing like it. But that uh, that own goal from Cape Corp, they were getting a little bit of extra help. Yeah. <laughs> they got a little extra help. Obviously, the help that K Corp don't want to give. Uh, I think uh, K Corp, though, actually looked very much like uh, BDS here in this last game. Despite the own goal, despite losing the game here, I, I feel like they did a great job defensively. Uh, very, very calm. Uh, in the panicked moments, it didn't really feel like BDS had a high-quality shot to kind of further that panic. They did a great job of kind of slowing things down and making sure that if BDS does get a shot, it's going to have to be around a player, which oftentimes led to a wide shot or a hide shot where Vatira could take over on the backboard. So uh, K-Corp, despite the loss here, I still think played a fantastic game. It was just a painful one to, to give up an own goal there. I mean, what else can you say? I think K-Corp might have been the better team here in this, in this last game. It just didn't pan out for them. It didn't pan out for him, but BDS also clutching up. You saw that uh, shot from Extra on the replay package bar down yep. from an amazing pass from Monkey Moon. So BDS, uh, they uh, they got the extra help, and uh, it ended up coming in quite handy. But still, BDS had to put in work of their own. Now we're moving to Neo Tokyo. Game six, still match point for K-Corp. Can BDS stay alive one more game and force game seven on Champions Field? Deep breaths for K Corp after that last game. 
can they do it again? They've strung together a couple games now where defensively they've been tested, but they have passed the test. Really, it's, it's just them <laughs> scoring on themselves is what did them in. I can't really argue with that analysis, Pirelli. <laughs> Own goals. They're always fun to see, but I'm sure tragic to be on the other yeah, end. As a fan, as a fan, I guess they're fun to watch. And maybe for the other team, certainly painful if it's your own team. Satira has Itachi upfield. The pass high, but Seiko had a red before Itachi. Now Monkey Moon trying to make this a foot race. Exotic, a very nice pinch in the corner. And we'll continue to move that ball downfield. A nice challenge from Seiko, though. We'll make things awkward. Vatira double tap, hit, but extra. There, now to Monkey Moon, but Monkey Moon wasn't able to get the pass. Clear attempt from Exotic. Seiko has Monkey Moon and extra both waiting at midfield. Now Lots extra's chance to shine. The 50 will get cleared out. Yeah, that one. Some good work there from K-Corp again. Extra had a bit of space, lots of boost to work with there. He was going to take it himself, trying to call his own number. BDS right back to where we've left off, I think, in the previous two games, where it's just BDS controlling a lot of the final third, having possession, controlling pace of play, but K-Corp not letting them in. 50 out to Seiko. Seiko lobs it up to Extra, but Itachi there. Good first touch for Monkey Moon. Let him take it up the wall, but immediately 50 by Vatira who passes it down to Exotic. Exotic shot blocked right away by Extra. Up with reset. Up, not getting it or not using it. Now Exotic on the dribble out. Now up on the ceiling. Seiko using up every ounce of boost to get a piece of that ball. Monkey Moon dribbling around one. Trying to fake and 50 and it almost worked out. The shot could have came. It went dangerously across the front of net, but no one connected. The extra. He's been trying to chip away, playing a quality second man here in these attacks. Monkey Moon, a bit close on this one, has to get back now. It does so. The speed and recovery there from Monkey Moon. Proved powerful for BDS to just get back in time. As Vatira now some space to work with. Flip reset. Follow-ups there. Seiko Ooh, denied. Double, Double commit from K-Corp, Itachi didn't get the best hit with that challenge from Exotic. Gonna get some time. And another challenge from Exotic. Flip reset from Vatira. Vatira going for the tip, but extra there. Now Itachi, heavy first touch, and now a pinch all the way to the other side of the field. Seiko will be first to it, and will lob it to the opposite corner. BDS trying to get some space to get some boost, but extra not getting a touch on it. Monkey Moon out to his own corner. Low boost situation for BDS. Monkey Moon only 10 boost in the tank and still saving it. Picking up some small pads. Finally being forced to use it. A nice clear from extra. Now Itachi last back. Had to swing around before getting the corner boost. Vatira, Vatira the setup. No one there from K Corp to take the shot. K Corp's attack seemed to fizzle out much quicker than BDS's. They don't have a lot of follow up, they're very conservative in their approach. I really like these high arcing passes towards the ceiling to find each other. BDS are just going to be too quick. Now Seiko, big bounce, looking for the bump on Itachi. Monkey Moon trying to oh, drop it cool. down. Itachi still makes the save. Itachi was being threatened with the bump and still making the play. But Tira oh. going for the bump. But Seiko had enough momentum to knock him back into the ball. K Corp, they can smell victory. It's so close. This game so close, still scoreless with under a minute left to play. There's a demo from Extra. He's chasing. Monkey Moon trying to get the team pinch. Seiko doesn't connect on the hit. And now collected by K Corp. First touch. Oh, well wow. done by Batira. Batira backward pass. Itachi another hit oh, off more. the backboard. Exotic. Oh, you saw Extra he tried. ending off that bump. If that bump connected, that would have been a shot chance for K Corp. Yeah, that attempted bump there on extra would have been crucial for the attack, or was crucial for the attack. This one comes in front of the box, and extra Monkey Moon combined. Extra credit with the save. The that was the case. The bump, the Monkey game. Moon, still comes out with the save. BDS are a brick wall. Still not over yet. Seiko 
off the sidewall. Exotic keeps it up. Ventura let it bounce down to the ground. Wow. Monkey Moon, that save was out of this world. I thought the game was over. I thought the series was over, but no. Monkey Moon helping BDS live to fight another day. And that's not the first save we've seen from Monkey Moon that's of that caliber. Now he's threatening the net. He has kept this BD squ BDS squad in this series. Here's Monkey Moon. Shot denied by Vatira. And K Corp looking to fend off BDS. We are inching closer and closer to a game seven. Oh, if you're K Corp, maybe you're starting to worry a bit. But that one off the ceiling. Down to Vatira. What? One team over. Series over. K Corp knockout team BDS. This one just pitched over the defense. It's as simple as that. It was too hard of a pinch for the defense to catch up to. Vatira was downfield. And K Corp come out on top and a happy one to come out on top with how the previous game went with the own goal, letting that game slip away, letting the series almost slip away. K Corp with a grinder comes out on top against BDS. This was not an easy win. Not an easy win by any measure. But K Corp, they do it. And again, the defending world champs out in the quarterfinals of the playoffs. And that will send K Corp on to play moist. And you, if you've been paying attention to Joyo's interviews, <laughs> you know, that is a, a, a nice rivalry they've got going. And it's going to get another round of action. Yeah, he wanted it. He wanted to go again. And he's going to get his wishes. K Corp, though are proven to be a top quality, top four, top two team here in Europe. Another win over BDS, and you can see the hype there in the celebration. <laughs> that means a lot to them. It's just the quarterfinals, James. Well, I mean, it's just the quarterfinals, but look at the big picture, Corelli. You know, the, the quarterfinals, you know, you move on to now top four. That points bag, you know, it grows ever bigger. And for K Corp, after getting top two in the last event, now top four again, they are pretty much a lock. They are a favorite for making it to Rotterdam. An incredible performance from them. And what an entertaining series wow. that was. All the timeouts used. I think we're going to need a timeout here. We're going to go to a quick break. And when we come back, we've got EG versus Vitality. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the RLCS. The European Fall Cup is halfway through day two. And we have just witnessed Carmen Corp annihilating BDS, really putting them in a bit of a pickle. Um, I'm here to talk to the man himself who's been part of that. He's surrounded by uh, the full team, actually, which is awesome. Itachi, uh, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hello, I'm good. And you? Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for asking. Now, you've got to explain to me what just happened here because we saw you guys struggle in Swiss yesterday. And now you've beaten BDS and you did it in style. What was the change up between yesterday and today? Uh, yesterday, like, I don't know why. We've been, uh, like, way playing less uh, better than what we did in the, the past couple of weeks. And even the last uh, week of Scream, we were really good. But I don't know why yesterday we were a bit off. And today, like, my teammates were really cracked. Like, I was. Uh, I was really not playing my best and my true teammates were really good and I think BDS was not playing at their best either, so I think that's what made us win now. Well, yeah, you mentioned BDS not playing at their best. I think I can agree with you there. Uh, they're in, you know, not too much trouble yet, but a bit of trouble. They've gone out two quarterfinals in a row. 
What do you think is, is happening with BDS? And uh, secondly, do you think they bounce back? No, I think they will uh, bounce back for sure. I know them for a really long time. I, they are my close friends, like in the scene, and I know that how good they are, and I'm sure at 100% they're going to bounce back and they're going to make the major. Yeah, okay. And, uh, yeah, like it, it's true result to top eight. I know it's frustrating for them, but I have no doubt they will uh, bounce back. So you guys will play against Moist tomorrow. This turning it to be the rivalry that we'd hoped it would be. You're currently 1-1 in series. You took them out at this stage last event, and they beat you guys in Swiss yesterday. What can we expect in the semi-final tomorrow? Uh, to be honest, we, we don't really care about any rival revol revol sorry, or anything. Like we are just here to beat everyone and be on top of the world. Like B Moist, BDS, we, we don't care. We're just going to play tomorrow game and hope we can win. And uh, that's what all the Carmi Corp fans really want to know at the end of the day is like, can you go that one step further? Last time you got second place, are you going to bring home the win this weekend? Of course, we're going to give our best and tomorrow is our cup. Well, good luck, Itachi. Congratulations on the win again today. And thanks for giving us a few words afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Confidence coming out from Carmine Corp. It should be expected. They just took down BDS uh, and... I'm just questioning Cole Chogan, yeah. which one of you want to uh, compliment Stumpy? Yeah. I'll, oh, I'll, I'll do it. I think <laughs> that yeah, he's yeah, fine. got he's he's quite tall. Um he is. his <laughs> voice isn't particularly grating all the time. How about his genius and, analysis? Well he's not here, and that's my yeah. favorite thing about This is actually him. the best analysis he's ever done. Um it's really showing uh, up. Uh, this weekend. <laughs> Carl, I actually I have a pit, bone to pick with you on this one. Me? Me? Yes, give you. What did I do? I'm not, I, I, I might Carmi. be just as wrong as you are about this uh -huh. one. Me and Johnny and you all wrong, including Dazarin, uh, you know. But uh, you were the one on today's pre-show that was saying, oh, you know what? Itachi, the player to watch. <laughs> and then I'm not going to predict him in his actual <laughs> What were we watching out for here, Cole? Watching him lose. What do you want from him? I mean, I wasn't expecting him to score monster double taps to win games late on after BDS had just equalized. That's for sure. That's not the Itachi that I know and love. That smart, I, intelligent... I want, I want us to get Cole like a point one of a point off. Uh, and that's only because me and him are tied for last right now. Oh, okay. If, I see. if we both I'm, get a I'm, pie, we both get a pie. That's fine. I'm going to get into the lead at this rate with it. <laughs> How you guys are going on this. But uh, yeah, just looking at the bracket, we got two matches left for the day, and we got the next one coming up soon. So let's start talking about it. Let's get it on the board here. We have Evil Geniuses versus Vitality. Both of these teams, Shogun, were not here last time. This is the first time in top eight in the new season, but only one of them gets to move on. Yeah, I mean, Evil Genius has been a team that we have looked at now for a year plus. Obviously, they now brought in Tox, uh, another player that kind of had uh, a lot to prove. They've also brought in Verge, a lot of very uh, credentialed coaching mm -hmm. coming in from that side. But for Vitality, oh, this is just such a weird team to try and keep up with uh, at the moment. But for EG, it's very much a case of what we feel like we know versus Vitality. It's question marks everywhere. I mean, for Vitality, they did beat three teams yesterday in the Swiss, obviously, to make it through. The three teams they beat uh, were Moist, Oxygen, mm -hmm. and Tundra. So mm -hmm. every single team they beat made it to this stage. If that's not a ringing endorsement of the team that play in yellow, then I don't know what would be. Yeah, I, I, I think it uh, I think it'd be weird to to put any question marks to Vitality, in my opinion, just because uh, of the teams they had to play to get through to. But how about you, Chad? Do you have any question marks on the team? Let's get the fan vote rolling right now. Hashtag VIT, hashtag EG, EG in the chat right now. Get your opinions out there. You guys, again, have your brackets already done. So I'm going to just throw mine out there too uh, mm -hmm. and say that I'm pretty sure I'm joining all of you guys with you vitality are. on this. Okay, good. You so are there are the question man. marks. You I'm mentioned happy, Shogun, there might You're be. You're normally right. <laughs> but there's no question marks here. No, I mean, you just got to look at what we saw yesterday. And obviously, Carmen Corp just proved that, you know, yesterday doesn't tell the whole story, but it's what we have to go off uh, for this weekend. And when you look at who Vitality beat versus who v Evil Geniuses beat, Vitality have had the better run. They look like the better team. Um, and also, you know, when you just compare nations, France versus Germany and Spain, I feel like I would always go with France at this point. Germany, it's it's not battle cars anymore, lads. Uh, this sort of seems like the time has been and gone. I mean, Evil Geniuses, though, they only lost one series themselves uh, going through 3-1. and one. If you go through 3-1 and one against any group of 16 teams, then you're doing okay. 
in Europe. And I think they are a very solid and dependable team. And Tox has been really good for them as well. He's just given them that yeah. little bit more incisiveness. I think he's given them some needed. sort of flair because Evil Geniuses yeah, exactly. looked very predictable to me they last did. season. It was like, this is a really good team to sort of be there. And we've had a lot of teams like that in the history of Europe. It's just like, all right, you're sick through to eighth. You might go to the major, but we're just sort yeah. of sending you to the major and we don't really believe you actually have a chance of winning it. Tox at least gives them a chance at competing for championships now because you need that X factor if you want to actually go and get championships. So maybe he's that for that team. I'm not convinced yet. Yeah, I, I was going to make that point too. That I, I Granted, we're all on Vitality side. Chat, are you with us too? But I, I think Tox honestly has been a great addition for the team. Hey, that's that's not too far off. That's some some decent faith behind EG, but from what I expected it'd be. But uh, yeah, I think they've, they've had a great addition, but they're going up against a team that's looking hot right now. So let's find out if they continue looking hot. Over in the skybox, Wave and Daz waiting to cast the match. Both teams at hand missed out on last regional's top eight, but one of them will now make it to top four. It's time for Evil Geniuses and Vitality to duke it out. This is the fifth showing we've seen between Evil Geniuses and Vitality in the history of the RLCS. They played in the Fall Cup close qualifiers just a few days ago. Evil Geniuses able to get the victory there 3-1. They went 1-1 one one, uh, in the course of RLCS 21-22. Uh, the fourth time, the first time they played Dazrin, Season 5, final bracket, round one, Evil Genius has knocked Vitality out. So two orgs with a long history in the RLCS, only playing for the fifth time here. That is true. These teams have a storied history almost in the RLCS season. And we've seen them have really strong rosters, some full of a lot of passion and this one now with Team Vitality full of a, a little bit of change. Again, this time we are, we're seeing this new roster really soar to new heights as the showing from this event has been fantastic. But where does that train stop? How far will they go? And the same question can be asked for this also new Evil Genius team as they're all racing Tundra Ooh. and Rizex as well, but already off to a hot start. You see Catalyst and putting on that first shot, forcing Alpha to make it clear. Loft the ball out of his back third there. We've got Evil Genius in the blue, Vitality in the orange. Tox taking the shot to the edge. Will be just wide of the goal. Sizing coming out of his own half. Gets met with a challenge now for Dosen onto the backboard. Nobody home in goal here. Ivan comes crossing out of the corner to make the first stop. We'll stay scoreless here. Ball neutral at midfield. Yeah, that was really good for Ivan. That was a, a, a dive of a save, but he's got a little bit more work to do here. You see where Dosen forcing Catalyst to make a save there. Again, that individual performance here from Vitality. If you see them with boost, and a free ball to do whatever they want to in the air. You got to be a little worried. Radosin, one of those players who could take things down, but he was looking for a size in there in the midfield. Cut off. EG, though, their defense is definitely very solid. We've, I've seen them have really strong defensive sense. The question is, are they going to be able to replicate that and also play offense against this high-powered Vitality offense team? Right now, both teams with two shots apiece as this game continues on. Relatively quiet first half here, about two minutes in. Alpha now off the wall. A little bit of control possibly gives it up to look for the bumps, doesn't find anything in Catalyst. We'll dribble it out of his half. High in the air, Ivan's got control. Reaches back for the second touch there, past one, runs into Alpha on the goal line. Follow up though is good. Tox will put EG on the board. I love this though from Ivan. It's the carry. Getting it past Sizene, forcing Alpha to get a touch out. And you can see it, almost, that's just such a frustrating dis touch to make. Right off the bar, mm. it's a free net. And Tox, he'll just get credit for an easy tap angle. I mean, a Alpha, I feel like, was, was good to get the block on the first shot. Such an aggressive beginning of the offense. And then the follow ups there from Tox as well. Alpha, good job. You tried your best. Not going to be able to block two there. Size known to Rodosa now as they're looking for the tying, tying touch here. Ivan over the top of one. Alpha now locked into the sky. Full tank of boost, but bumped Ooh. off the ball. Catalyst will close in on it. Try to take over. That's still very important to be able to get that bump. Again, denying comfortability oh. from Alpha. Again, he gets oh. crossed up. He's chopping up the defense, Ivan. Very solid so far. Can Tox get around to this? No. <laughs> defense comes back in time to get the denial. But man, even then, 
still, that comfortability is not really so visual here for Vitality. They've, on the other side of things, it, it's looking a little scrappy, and EG is totally okay with playing with this style. They're trying to build up off that momentum from the first goal. Oh, here comes Sizen looking to try and tie things up, but runs into Ivan on the goal line. Catalyst now on the transition. Past one, runs into Alpha High on the read. Tox able to dodge the demo and stay behind the ball to neutralize it at midfield, but I wasn't able to get back to that one in time and push forward. I agree with you, though. Evil Genius is looking wonderfully creative in their scrappy play on offense. Going like, oh, I'm going to go for this, this, this weird touch. Maybe it'll work out, and it did multiple times. They just fell apart at the goal line. The final touch to put in that, not quite there. And Vitality, that's the last place you want to be defending. If you're having to stop it right before the goal happens, you're leaving yourself no room for error. Yeah. A little, little concern though, looking at Alpha. I mean, he's definitely had some solid defensive stops and he's made some great saves, but in terms of him not being able to really do what he wants to on offense, I mean, even now, like he's trying to dive for the ball, but size is so much closer. He just hasn't really been able to get those offensive set pieces like he wants to as that one rolls past the goal line. You really wonder once he gets control of the ball, if he can create some play opportunities. He's got a minute left and so does Team Vitality. If they want to get back in, oh! yes, he connects. He scores and Vitality on the board. That's a, you, you were asking for it here. Want to see Alpha up in kind of the second roll here. Look for the, him to be the player to put it away. Sizen setting up Alpha here instead of the other way around to tie the game. 57 seconds left. Vitality has made it even. Game one still anything but excited. Now things kind of slow down and for EG, that stop really kind of kills some of that momentum they were building. They've got to play this game very smartly because now with Vitality getting things running on all cylinders, they're gonna they're gonna try to hit them hard. Get through one, but Alpha's there now. Catalyst. Thirty seconds remaining. Runs into Rodosin. Ivan finds a stop. Touches wide and Catalyst falling back to be the first line of defense here. He's on the backboard struggling to find the position he needs. Luckily, Ivan able to move in on the goal line to cover up the hole that was left. And then a rolling clear by a little bit of time, but final 10 inbound here. Anyone's game setting the tone in the match here in game number one. So huge for either team. Either one with a better hold on it. Here comes Rodosa with an open net to shoot at. He'll put it through with two seconds left. The front line paved the way for him, and they've got it all but locked up. Oh, and the front line, you talk about paving the way. They push through the defense. Radosin gets a lane, and he picks the shot. Ivan also almost guessed where it was going to go, but just didn't have the reaction to stop such a high-powered shot. Two seconds left, and Vitality will take game one. They steal it away from EG. It was, it, man, uh, they almost made it to overtime there, but this one really felt... This one felt like a coin flip to me, Daz. Like, both yeah. teams so strong on, on both sides. We saw great defensive stands. We saw great offensive drives. Ultimately, Vitality able to eke out an extra point right before the end of time to get that important first game win. Yeah, I mean, EG scores that first goal just under the three-minute mark. And for the next couple of minutes, it's just EG warding off Vitality. You know, they stick to that defensive end and they play it really well. But... Again, once once Alpha got going on that offense, like I said, that's when Vitality as a whole just started to look so much stronger. And after they got that equalizer, it really just felt like they had everything going their way. Yeah, no, Alpha is such a strong player on all parts of the pitch. So seeing him make the, the setups, the clear game uh, uh, to prepare for the rest of his team is, is wonderful. He's going to excel at that role, but it's just not... It's not where, as a Vitality fan, you want to see Alpha fitting into the offensive rotation. You want to see him receiving the passes upfield um, as that highlight star-studded player we all have come to know him to be. So uh, we'll see if they can continue to put him upfield there. Prepare him. Does Vitality start to walk away with the series? Or can Evil Geniuses bounce back? See them here defending in their own third. You see both uh, Evil Geniuses decals demonstrated on uh, Ivan and Catalyst's cars, respectively. A crazy variety. Get those oh, those the touch. And they need to go over here. Let's go. Oh, oh no! Tox blocks the shot! Oh, that's tragic. Oh, that is so unfortunate. <laughs> and it almost ends up going the other way. And uh, with the carefully thought out play there from EG, <laughs> they were almost over the finish line. But unfortunately, <laughs> they trip over each other's shoes. Oh, the, the, the hard part about 
being up in the first man and then having to like rotate through net. You do for a moment, ever so slightly, at the smallest moment, become a defender. If your teammate's just unlucky enough to shoot it straight at you. Ivan, does he get oh. up in time for this? No! The pace of the shot, too much. Vitality strike first. Just so much space here. Ball goes out. You can see Catalyst just trying to recover that. Size and knows he's awkward. And again, Ivan, it's that same shot that was scored on him by Redosin to end game one. I mean, that's just a spot right now for Vitality. Two back-to-back -back goals there. You're, you're, he's right in front of the box. Places the ball top bar at 111 kilometers an hour. Pretty much unsavable. Got to got to have the most lightning reflexes to reach out in time. Here's an infield pass, infield pass to Alpha indeed. Places it top bar again. 2-0 now, Vitality. I, I'm loving that location of the placement wave. I'm not going to lie. They, yeah. It just works for them every <laughs> single time. This time, Tox was playing it high, but kind of expected that ball to go more middle of the net. And you can just see it soaring right over his head. That's got to be frustrating. You, 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 infield passes. You have, as the shooter, you have so little time to kind of size up your shot. It makes sense. Like if I'm if I'm the defender there, I'm also defending the middle of the net. That makes the most sense that that's where Alpha's gonna place it, but he's just that good, Daz. Able to put it top bar. Didn't even touch it. Not cross bar down, sneak it under. Brilliantly placed. Vitality firmly in control of game two and the series right now. I mean, when we look at EG though, in game one, it really felt like their kind of plan was kind of get in front of Alpha, slow him down. It's, oh, that was a crazy redirect from Tox. Ivan will try to keep this in the play, but they were so aggressive, especially Ivan too. I mean, he was all over the ball in midfield. He was running it around past everybody on Vitality, but it seems like that kind of gotten lost in all the translations from EG. You know, they've been busy just trying to stop and block all these shots that they kind of have lost control of being able to dictate the pace. That time though, Ivan had a really good setup there and really had to force Alpha 54 to be, get on the ground. This time, no one will be able to stop him here as he does get the ball into the back wall. Vitality trying to extend their lead. We're halfway through game two, they're up by two. Sizen coming from the midfield, leaping to block the shooter who's dribbling the ball on the like top of the corner at midfield. Like, he has a stretch so far not out of rotation necessarily, but definitely a spot where lesser players would just turn around and say, hey, third man, can you please come in and collect this and manage to make enough of a block. Vitality feeling strong right now. Sides and blocks the pass. Two defenders, free ball here for Redosin. Can place it anywhere he wants and Catalyst will get there. Redosin not able to put enough pace on the ball to outstretch the defender there. But Vitality nearly up by three here in game two. They'll find the blocks on the counterattack. Yeah, I'm actually surprised they didn't come away with that one. It looked like... That, when Sizen goes up for that, he's going up knowing Rodosi can get a play on it, and he's not just putting it in the empty space and blocking his teammate's shot. They bait out two. It almost worked there. Yeah. It was just that final shot, not really the best place, but just straight into Catalyst. Yeah. But very interesting to see Vitality mix it up like that. This, uh, Catalyst literally just puts a hand up, and they put it straight into his hand. Rodosi into Sizen. Again, lofted in the corner, but Ivan's got it covered. Let's see Alpha. Move in from the third man, keep the ball buried in Evil Genius's back third. Ball hasn't crossed the midfield line here for a good 30 seconds or so. This is bad news for Evil Geniuses. They've, they, they've shown that they have what it takes on defense to stop the majority of what Vitality brings at them, but here again, struggling just to keep the ball out of the back third and trailing by two, you've got to find a way to get on offense. Finally, they will cross the midfield line. And what can Tox create? That's a good Ooh. chance. Alpha's forced up this time, able to recover. Oh. And then the size and into Alpha, the pinch out to try yeah. to gain some space. As there's a race here, Ooh. Redosin last bag, dodges Ivan and gets the ball. That's such an excellent touch. Chance uh. for another goal. Alpha, Ooh. no, too high this time. It's over the bar. And it'll be two goal game. They're still trying to extend that lead and run out the clock. Final 30 seconds left, Vitality in full control. They make it look so easy, just sneaking it under the crossbar. It's, you, you start to watch them, start to think it's automatic, but it is so difficult to place the ball just under the crossbar repeatedly, consistently there as Alpha put it just a little bit high on what would have been the game clinching goal here. Might be enough anyways, though. One last drive here. They need to score on this next touch. And Catalyst going to put it high, not able to put it towards the goal. Clock will expire. 2-0 lead. It'll be insurmountable here. Vitality going to take a two-game lead over Evil Geniuses. 
<laughs> I can see on the cams that saying. Just trying to get a little old gold action in. And yep, uh, as I probably would say expect it, EG, you know, they come up really empty here on this game. And with that, they take a tactical timeout. I mean, Vitality was just running around on the blue half that entire game, just putting on shots. Alpha himself had five shots alone. He was matched up with Catalyst, but with size and a Redosa and also putting on three apiece, I mean, that power, that control of the game flow, Vital Vitality right now completely in the driver's seat here. And for evil geniuses, they need a roadblock. They need to be able to kind of slow them down any way they can. This time out to kind of talk things over, find a new approach is uh, a big deal. I mean, what, what is the adjustment here for evil geniuses? I mean, obviously Alpha has been a problem, but at this point, I mean, th th we saw both Alpha and Sizen with excellently placed shots. I'm, I'm the only player that we saw have a good opportunity to score and kind of not make make it work was Redosin, and that was one instance. It's not enough for me to like look at it and be like, oh, he, we should stop thinking of Redosin as a threat. I think you got to think of everyone here on Vitality as a threat. But getting out of their half, I mean, my 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 first thought, Daz, I don't know what your thought is, is, is to go to is like first touch quality. They need to once. When the ball is being hit to them, they have to find a way to save and clear, not just save or just clear. While they're, when they're giving kind of that, that second window of opportunity of, okay, we stopped your first shot, but we haven't got it out of our box. Vitality is closing in on that over and over again. If they're able to save and get the ball out of their half and within the same touch, they're gonna buy themselves a lot more space. Yeah, you can even see the coach in the background chatting. I think for me, um, you definitely have a great point in that first touch. It, and that helps because for what I was going to say was that possession being very important, being able to get that follow-up touch off of the initial one, being able to kind of bring the ball out, but also get yourself that extended pressure. Don't force yourself into these tough spots on defense because you end up giving the ball to Vitality. And again, that mechanics can be used to just pick apart defenses so much. If one player can force two up, that's a problem. And we see it even in that that final play there where we thought a goal was kind of coming through. Those double commits not doing any favors here for EG. They've had to come together cohesively if they want things to work out. Yeah, the, the, the pace that Vitaly's been attacking with. I mean, again, we saw that infield pass play. The, the first goal as well, just a one-touch wonder of a shot. Simple, but very effective. That sort of speed is going to force double commits out of a team that doesn't have their rotations perfectly organized. It's going to be it's going to be difficult. Here is a nice Ooh. flick catalyst just high. Love the setup there. They're mm -hmm. trying to strike early here in game three, but still no goal. Just a great drive there. And that's that, that, there you go. You you see it. Catalyst keeps the ball close. Lead block. It's uh -oh. just that finish needs to be there. That would have been a great way to come out of a timeout for EG. But this time, Vitaly get a chance to strike back. And they're trying to break apart that defense. Ivan will clear it into some space. And Catalyst will get some extra breathing room. And they don't get punished for it. But on the counterattack after that opening drive, another double commit on the goal line from Evil Geniuses. Uh, giving um, openings like that to a team that's already playing as hot as Vitality is going to make it very difficult to win this series as Alpha. What a way to get back to the wall and then back to the ball. The recovery on this man is incredible. This guy looks like it's bumped. Might be able to keep himself in the play here. Nearly tried to. Appreciate the effort. Now Alpha up against Tox. Now Ultra Dosin. Placed well on this one, but I even had it red. A mile away. Gets up in time. Makes the stop. We'll stay scoreless. Here's Catalyst Bring this out in the space. Great 50. Ivan drives in front to try to get someone jumping oh, inside. Oh, and whoa! Wow. Ball over halfway in. And Sizen, who looks super uncomfortable, is able to recover and make the stop. He's, oh, and a double commit on the other side. This time Ivan's going to have a completely open net. Evil geniuses find a double commit out of Vitality, and they'll take the lead. This one, you see, it's that touch from Tox. That, but yeah, you have two on the back wall. Someone needs to be on the ground there. We talk about communication issues with EG, but you start to see some there from Vitality, and EG take full advantage. That, I'm still thinking about that size and, like, jackhammer save. I don't know what to call it. They're like, just like <laughs> the full boost and straight into the corner. He was getting zoned by Ivan before that, too. It's what made him so uncomfortable. Oh but God. on the other side, they say, hey, stop thinking about our failed defensive attempts here. Alpha's back in the scoring booth. Look at, oh, look at the him call off. up. Yep, calls him off, sets himself up, says, I got it, and knocks it in. Great angle from Alpha. And when he's on like that, yeah, 
Let him have the ball. Oh. He's doing good work. Oh, close one there. Rodos able to dodge the demo bump. Keep that from immediately dropping, but Alpha having a wonderful day. Rodos in the corner up against Catalyst. Very neutral. And they go for a second challenge here. He actually backs out and gives it to Sizen. And Catalyst wins the challenge again and then pinches kind of inadvertently with Tox. Now Rodos are dodging one. Half a tank of boost to work with here. Sizen in the midfield. Looks for the flip reset. Maybe got it. Tries to use it there at the end. Alpha. Try and come in. Sizen just drove straight up the middle of the field and basically just turned back around. After not receiving the ball. I want to flip from Toxic and give Alpha a little bit of space here. Awkward recovery, but still manages to win the challenge. Now 1v1 up against Ivan. Goes for the bump, gives it to Sizen, and Tox comes in from behind to make the save and keep us tied up. Rodosin trying to put the nail in it here, but still not able to get to the defense. Evil Genius is starting to find some creativity on defense. Love that though from them. When the Vitality try to mix it up, EG able to match that, and then also they get there in time, and they're quick to try to jump on one of these counters. Oh. Catalyst, no, Sizen again. Another great save from him. It just feels like he individually is a wall that has been keeping Vitality in this game. Here comes a pass play. Ivan to Tox. Tox played off that back wall. Not necessarily the best touch there. And Catalyst will try to do it all himself for a moment. It was rough for Tox. He, he goes up trying to redirect the ball, but actually ends up in a spot where he really can't put it on net. Just has to yeah. try and play for a, the third man to come in. But yeah, si I mean, Sizen in goal, They're, that long card, the Dominus starting to become a, a thing of the past, it feels like. I've seen fewer and fewer Dominuses in RLCS, but making a difference there on the goal line time and time again. Yeah, those Dominus players, they can't let them die out yet. I know Achieves definitely is keeping track of all of them. <laughs> himself being a Dominus main, but Sizen uses it really well. He is incredible here. Hashtag save the Dominus' is chat. Here comes Alpha. Rodosin on an aggressive challenge. We'll lose, and here's Sizen out of the midfield. Tied up as we go into the final minute. Tox now lofted it for the long range reposition. I was going to try and take control here. Rodosin's going to let him get two touches out of it, but pick up second touch on him. No, no, no. Now this pitch goes straight to Catalyst. Double coming on the goal. I kind of had to. Really no other option. And now Alpha, though, emerging with control, managing to win a challenge and get a demolition out of it. In front of the goal. Size is going to put it in with the butt of the Dominus for the lead. 34 seconds left. Look at this play out. I mean, great 50 from Alpha. A little confusion. Tox trying to go off the top of the goal there. And Sizen is just going to bear straight down. You have to get a solid read there if you're Tox. And that could be the one that decides this game. EG have to race against the clock as you see 30 seconds on your screen. Trying to pass to Tox here. Alpha gets up and covers. Hold on to control for now. Looking for the ground pinch, just gets a ground roll out of it. Catalyst now, 20 seconds left. Runs into Rodosin immediately, back into the corner. Evil Genius is in the exact same spot they were at the end of game two, struggling to get the ball out of their back third. Final 10, Sizen off the backboard. Alpha into the oh, crossbar, tossed oh, away, missed. but Sizen's right there. Couldn't put it on target. Alpha's still in the area to make trouble, to create chaos. The clock has expired, and he's going to put it into the ground. Vitality, three up, three down, one away from the sweep. They just swarm EG towards the end of that game. You, you, you see that breakdown there, unfortunate positioning from Tox that gives Vitality that lead. And as the clock takes down for the last 30 seconds, it's just attack, attack, attack from Vitality, not letting EG get to the midfield at all as they just keep them really stuck into their goal line. But EG had so many good shot opportunities. The drives were there. The only thing was, they had to go up against Sizen, who was there yeah. saving their best drives yet. If Sizen's not in the net on some of those, I think EG probably could have even kept, walked away with this game. Sizen here, he has, it was 472 personal score to 471 over his team. I didn't catch which team it was. I think it was Alpha. Literally one personal score gave him the MVP there, but that does not tell the story. He was absolutely the MVP. The touches he made, huge on that one, on both offense and defense, scoring the go-ahead goal, blocking two amazing drives there from Evil Geniuses. And now, Evil Geniuses with their backs against the wall, they must reverse sweep to continue here in the playoff bracket. Vitality with so many opportunities in front of them. Question is, can EG get it together? Vitality 
are just playing their game. They seem comfortable, confident, and in control. For EG, it feels like the opposite. A little disoriented, trying to recover, and really trying to find that offensive success. Once they're in that, that box, the drives that they worked so hard to create kind of fall apart right in front of them. And then they have mm. to hold off that counterattack for Vitality that just seems sharp as a knife. Vitality, man. What a storied organization in Rocket League. And it, 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 it's special to me to see them playing with this level of confidence again, back in the top eight. But Evil Genius is also a, the story of their own. A story, a, a, a big, Part of the story for me of Evil Geniuses is the what the, the spoiler, the wild card. They take other team seasons and destroy them. They they give them the one loss that they couldn't handle. Season five, Evil Geniuses versus Vitality, round one, lower bracket in game five. Evil Geniuses knocked Vitality out of the season five world championship. And it's just, it, it there hasn't for Evil Geniuses ever been that moment of excellence in Rocket League of here's our huge win but they have ruined those moments for so many other teams. And what a moment it would be here if they were able to do it to Vitality. Sizen, looking for Ivan, not gonna find him. Now Alpha, pass across the field. Sizen's back it off, but makes the quick turn on it. Already beaten the air by Catalyst, though. Bernosen just lost the ball at midfield and Sizen demolished. We'll make an easy choice for Alpha here. He's gonna loft, take the ball into the backboard. Look for a clear. EG, you know, I, I tried to say this a little bit on the pre-show, that them having kind of slow starts here. We saw it yesterday when they played against Tundra in round one. And it seemed a little Ooh. bit like that, but oh, Catalyst should be goal. getting a little cataclysmic oh, with a couple demos, but it doesn't even matter. Tox can't put the ball into the back of the net. It was a tough oh. angle. And even though they, like I said, they get these drives wave where it looks so promising. They need the final Ooh. shot to go through all of Vitality jumping on that one to make the save out. Ivan has a little bit of control. To talk. Hey. finally they find the back of the net. EG scores first in game four. This felt inevitable. I mean, with just how much dominating pressure they were putting on in this drive. If they didn't emerge with a goal, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. If they hadn't scored on that drive right there, to me, that's the end of the series. It, it, does, like, it doesn't even matter the Vitality hasn't scored. If you couldn't score on that one, it's over. But they do. They managed to put it in the back of the net. The hope stays alive. And now, a one goal lead with half the game to go here in game four. It's so promising. You, you see that consistent pressure come out. And that lets you know, and that lets the players know as well, okay, we can get this team jumping. We can get that whole net jumping. But hold on, somebody else needs to jump. Redos is sent it to the top left corner. Finally, the, the one player we hadn't seen really pop off on the offense here. 114 kilometers an hour back. Ivan, the moment the touch happens, Ivan knows, well, cool. I've, I hope that's not in because there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, you're right. There, there was nothing he could do about it for sure. Vitaly strike back rather quickly. And Alpha looking for a double. Cataclysm says not today. Uh -oh. Ties in midfield. Oh. Vitality coming out here. They're throwing some punches back at EG. And EG has to play through that as Tox gets through Radosin and wants to put a shot on. Ivan gets Sizen in the air, but do they see Tox? Oh, what a read on that one, being able to recover and get the block. He is so good. Sizen is having a a career series right now. The space left for Alpha. Oh, the Radosin was set up for the redirect in net, but covered up by the goalie. Now Catalyst out of the corner. 125 on the clock in a tie game. Must win situation for Evil Geniuses. 3 1. Tox advancing on offense. Puts it back into the box. And the box. Oh, Sizen still gets back. Nothing gets past this man. You need to demo him because the little bump's not working. Every single time he's had anybody try to disrupt him, he still gets to stay. Oh. The ball's been halfway oh. in the net. Oh. He puts it in the net. Oh, Sizen doing it all for Vitality. Size him up, folks. He's an extra large in every stat right now. Look at this man go. He's giving him the go ahead goal. Hold it on and they'll get the sweep on Evil Geniuses. We were talking so much about Alpha at the beginning of the series and we got dupe. It's sizing you got to look out for right now. Absolutely. All over the field. What a performance. Of course, he hasn't been doing it alone. Redosin and Alpha have been there every step of the way. 
And EG, Vitality, is a problem to you that it seems like even the evilest of geniuses can't solve. <laughs> you gotta get, you need a bigger brain apparently. Five head wasn't enough. Size in midfield, 30 seconds, one goal game. Very doable, like, the score line is, is still a threat. Vitality has to play perfect Rocket League to secure up this series, but they're doing it right now. And the final minute, the final seconds have belonged to Vitality every single game. The ball has yet to be in a tieable situation as the clock expires. Here's the best look it's had yet, but still to block at the goal line. Five seconds left as Catalyst takes it to the backboard. Ivan in front for three, but pinched away. The clock has expired. Tox manages to keep it alive. Size it up on top of him, and he'll kill it. Vitality, four up, four down, a sweep on Evil Geniuses. You say it, four up, four down, and a top four. For Team Vitality, a team that couldn't even qualify for the playoffs last event. What a resurgence for this team. This is what Vitality fans have wanted to see. The level of dominance that is just no questions asked about it at all. Wow. Wow. Dominant, dominant is such a good word for how well this series went, especially given that that final game and the performance from Saiza. You, you could make a highlight reel just out of his touches here. That final save that we saw him put off, pull off where he's getting bumped in net, managed to come out again, the ball like halfway in the goal, pulls defeat out from the clutches of evil, and he's also put ahead the go-ahead goal himself. What a performance. And yeah, the top four. This is this is such a I don't know. This is such a good feeling for the Vitality fans, and there's many of them. One of the most storied organizations in Rocket League. Here, we'll see Vitality playing in the top four tomorrow. But we got one more match left to go today to find out who's going to play Vitality. It'll be a doozy. You won't want to miss it. Quadrant versus Tundra Esports coming up after the break.
danger Closer than your heart When the weight is getting heavy And the future is unsteady Close your eyes, close your eyes Think about all the dreams you keep inside Think about all the ones you love I know this beating heart will be my guide I know that we can overcome When the world's so cold and we lose it Hope I need it, I need it When the darkness comes and we roll I'm glad I need it That's when we need each other Vitality take down EG in a 4-0 sweep. The comeback kids bouncing back in the Fall Cup. Now Sam comfortably sit in the top four to talk to us all about that series is Sizen. Sizen, welcome to the stream, my friend. Hey, hello, guys. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. We're happy you're on. Obviously, you guys ecstatic coming off of this win, but I want to talk. I want to back up before we get into this series. You guys missed the first regional. You guys come back in. Now you're sitting top four. What's been the biggest difference from you from the first regional to the second? Uh, uh, to be honest, we didn't really understand the, the lose after the first regional, and we had a, we had just a, a meeting. We went to to Paris in the in the, in the bootcamp just to talk after the first regional with like the the CEO of Vitality and stuff, and yeah, just being able to talk about all of that, we. <laughs> okay, excuse me. Yeah, we we set up some some um, some goals about like what we need to to do and what we need to improve, and we've done it. And like being able, like the the first goal was to to make main event, and after it was just bonus. And yeah, we are so happy. Well, it sounds like you guys are exceeding your goals at the moment here. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, you know, we heard you even before this interview started, but right now you guys are having a ton of fun on camera, even when you guys were yeah. scoring your goals in, in, during the game. What's the general vibe like on this team? I think there's a lot of questions about Vitality right now from a fan's perspective, from an outside mm -hmm. perspective, but it seems like you guys are having a lot of fun during these games. So what's it like being in these games and how do you guys feel? Uh, I mean, that that's just crazy. Like. All the moments, even in screams and stuff, we are always like laughing and taking like everything pretty like simple. But we just we just chill and try to have fun and 
like it's so fucking good to play. Like we are just laughing <laughs> and enjoying. So that's I love it. I love it. Well, good because uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job, and it's great to hear that the vibes are good. I want to uh, hone in a little bit more now on Europe uh, Vitality versus Europe. Who do you think is your biggest rival, or maybe your biggest competition right now in Europe? Uh, I'm gonna say Carmen Corp. Huh? <laughs> Okay. The, the Vitality Coming Cup is always like a big one v one in terms of organization, and we are we are here to show that we can beat them. Yeah, there's a ton of a uh, French uh, competition out there as well, so uh, not surprised to hear the K Corp uh, call out. Uh, speaking of uh, you know other teams here that are still in the tournament, Tundra and Quadrant are coming up next. I want to get your thoughts on who you would or wouldn't pl want to play in the next round. Uh, how, how do you make that matchup? Uh, to be honest, I think Quadrang is going to four zero Tundra because wow. like Cash is just crazy and and Ixo is an amazing player. I love Cassio, my brother, but <laughs> I, I, I think Quadrang are going save, to win. Good save. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we've just seen like in the in the main event they like they made like a three zero. They are they're just mm -hmm. a, an inside team and yeah. I'm I hope I would prefer to play Tundra because we already beat them in the main event. But I think Quadrang is going to play. And that's going to be a tough match. Yeah, certainly quadrant on the the uptrend here. Uh, Sizen, thank you for for coming on to the stream. Any uh, shout outs? Anything else you want to give before we let you go? Uh, grosse dédicace uh, aux frérots de, de Vitality, aux supporters qui nous ont supporté même uh, dans les loose après uh, qu'on ait pas fait une dinguerie au, au régional. Vous voyez que on a bossé, on a montré qu'on pouvait vraiment être une top team. Donc merci encore à vous, merci à tous les supporters. Uh, je vous aime et gros cœur sur vous. Bisous. Well, thank you. In your own words. In your own words, Sizen. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much for coming on. We appreciate you and uh, good luck in the top four. Yeah, thanks, man. Bye bye, guys. Have a good nice day. Vitality looking like they're having a lot of fun over there, and I don't blame them. They've made it into the top four after a disappointing first regional. Cole and James, uh, James, this is uh, this is just fantastic for a team like this to set goals and start to meet them. Well, I mean, it gives you that little boost of confidence. I mean, if you saw Alpha after the last regional event, he said, I just don't know how to play Rocket League anymore. Well, I think we could all see <laughs> that's clearly false. He still knows how to play Rocket League and knows how to play it very well. This is an epic bounce back for Vitality, but because they missed that main event last time, they really do need as many points as they can get. So this top four is incredible, but you know that now they have their goals set even higher. I've also got to say a bit of an apology to Mr. Dazarin, who stepped in for Stumpy on the pre-show. And I believe when the question was made of who's most likely to get a 4-0, he said Vitality. And do you know what we all said? Us silly old Brits. We said, nah, no chance. <laughs> we were wrong. He was right. Credit to him. Fair play. It was also nice to see Farah on screen there again. Miss him. But oh, uh, we it. do have Vitality making their way through into top four. Only one spot ends up remaining here. They join Moist Esports and a K Corp in that top four, which means we have to find out who that last one is. Let's start talking about this one. It's going to be Quadrant versus Tundra. And you you heard there that there was some confidence from Sazen that Quadrant may be the favorite coming into this matchup. Cole, Tundra definitely, in my opinion as well, has a bit of an uphill battle. Oh yeah, it's going to be very difficult for Tundra. Quadrant are a team that no one has necessarily expected to be making semifinals, but now they're there, they're proving an immovable object for their opponents. But I do like Tundra a lot. I mean, Cassio, he's a player that we keep saying, oh yeah, he's he's not finished, but mechanically he's going to slow down and he keeps us getting better. And then Razias, he's not a rookie this season. He did play once in one regional last season, but this is his first real season with a team that's knocking on that door of being at the top based on that game is eight momentum that he gains. And he is showing himself incredibly well. So there's a lot to love about Tundra too. Let's 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 break this down while we get the the fans involved as well. Let's let's throw up that vote. Start tallying up here right now. Who you guys think are gonna win? Hashtag TUN, hashtag quad in the chat for Tundra or Quadrant, respectively. We have ours thrown down here, and uh, I got to see it ahead of time, so you know where the target of conversation is about to be, uh, because we're on Quadrant over here, Ooh. and despite the overwhelming favorite going into this team, James has taken Ooh. a different direction which means you'll need to stand on your two feet here and make your voice loud. Uh, I mean, do you remember Top Blokes? Do you remember Veloce? I mean, do you, do you remember Triple Trouble? I am so, like, I, at what point will people just give Cassio credit for being a great player and give his team more credit 
then they're giving him. I, I mean, even size it on his interview said, I think it's going to be four a four row. You know, it's like you could have even just said, I think Quadrant's going to win, but no, he goes that extra step further. Well, I'm tired of it. I'm tired. I've been watching Casio upset people's expectations for his entire career. And so to see you both going for Quadrant, it makes sense. I understand it. They are a good team. I think a lot of people would pick Quadrant in this situation, but someone just needs to pick this Tundra team. They are continuing to get results. They are not a bad team. Casio is a great player, not just a good player. He's a great player. And this Tundra team can get the win. And I truly do believe that they will get the win here over Quadrant. Cole, well, while, while, while he, I, I like, you know, I like the stance of respect. I like the passion as well. Casio, right? But I also feel like he just called us boring and I don't like that. <laughs> I mean, you, we I mean sometimes know. you're boring, sometimes <laughs> yeah. you're safe, whatever you want to call it. I understand it. It's another day at the office for you, Leaf. It's another day oh, at the office, okay. Cole. Okay, I'm I out here. Like, I'm gaming. Okay, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm playing the strats. The long term, I feel like I got it. Tundra's the teeth. I'm a fairly dull person, James, and I look at Quadrant, the fact that they were the top scorers in the Swiss. You know, they can defend all day long. Chuck three of them in the goal. I don't know if they're going to be blue or orange. Chuck them in there. Oh, they're going to be blue. Chuck them in the blue goal. They can defend against Sandra for half an hour. They'll be fine. I'm sticking with my maybe it's boring prediction. Chad, is there any help for James at all? Is, a chat is there boring is the question. Hey, it's, it's honestly boring hey, chat. It's, it's, it's just like you the desk. I mean, it's like one third. It's, as well. it's, just a little more. It's almost perfect. Yeah, Tundra, though, definitely has a bit of an uphill battle. I mean, I, I agree with you. I think uh, a lot of people don't put enough respect on Casio's name. But when you look at Quadrant and the offense that they've had, it feels like most teams and uh, evidently so most teams can't handle that offense. So we're going to have to have a super strong defense coming up from Tundra. But we're going to find out what actually will happen in this matchup as it's about ready here. Shogun and Johnny in the skybox for the match. Our final match of day two has arrived as Quadrant and Tundra hit the field to battle for top four. Quadrant sits as favorites, so let's see if Tundra has a secret weapon. My goodness, how quickly does Europe change up? Going into last week, nobody was really thinking about Quadrant being one of those top six teams. Now, Johnny, it's almost like they're a shoe in according to our, well, parts of our desk, uh, getting the top four. Yeah, and they can really put the pressure on the teams around them as well. If they can somehow win this, then I mean, I'm saying somehow because I, I think I underrated Quadrant coming into this, uh, this play. I listened a bit too much to all the pros in the region who are saying, yeah, this team's not looking too hot in scrims. They're not looking too consistent. Um, and you know, they struggled to qualify for a regional one as well. But uh, this is a chance for Tundra for sure. I think they're the underdogs here, but if they can get the win, they are suddenly in a fantastic position to make the major. Oh, for both teams, this is massive. You know, Tundra are the ones trailing a little bit more at the moment, but that switches up if you get through this round. And well, that's exactly how you do it. You want to talk about being disrespected. Casio has felt disrespected for his career, has not got the respect that he deserves, and continues to score throughout every single chance he gets. I absolutely love that pass from Razier's as well. Little one-two move there from Casio and Razier's. Razier's just making sure to get the ball past the opponent, going the safe uh, route into the ceiling there. This is going to be open. Rizik oh just good blocks luck. it past a pre-jump, a failed pre-jump. Tundra up 2-0. Oh, dearie oh, me. My. Oh, Well, yeah, that's rough. The last goal was good. This goal. Well, you score what you're given. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that was not a tough read. You know, it's, <laughs> no. if Relating Wave's got 12 booster or something there, then fair enough. You know, you might just end up in the wrong position and be awkward. He had 100 boost there. That is a routine read. Should be an easy clear for Relating Wave. Um, but instead, Rizix, you know, he just does the world's most open net. Um, off the back of it, credit to him. You know, you've got to be there. You've got to be there to predict the miss if it is going to happen, even if it is in a weird place. Yeah, absolutely so. As Rizex actually might be able to give his team yet another opportunity. Uh, we were talking earlier on, uh, very briefly, uh, whilst Cassio was going to go about players that maybe have not given oh. credit that they are deserved. As my goodness, that one was close. But, uh, you know, you've got players like Ixo that we've been waiting to sort of crown one of the top players in the region for years now. You've also got Relating Wave on the field, a player that kind of got stuck in the season uh, of the, um, the hype that we saw. Uh, throughout last season for his teammates. And, yeah. you know, as soon as that went, everyone's just like, oh, okay. done. But this is a player that has been hyped for so long, Cash gets them to bleed back. 
Yeah, lovely acceleration there by Cash. He waited for one player to dive in, flicks it over and bumps the goalkeeper. Nice little 1v2 one, one play there from Cash. It was all about having the opportunity to accelerate the ball when he saw the challenge coming and to get that much, <laughs> uh, not just on the ball, but on his card to then rapidly bump the goalkeeper. I mean, that's why Cash is so dangerous, as Sizen mentioned in the previous interview. This is the guy to, to watch. I mean, Sizen also said this is going to be a 4 0, so he's not going to be too happy with the current standings, but we're delighted to see Cash popping up. Yeah, we'll see whether or not I can get a stake on size and mixed up once again. As we do see Eek, though, dropping down, leaves it for a late way. They're going to need some more help. So Rizek does get rid. As Casio gets the ball back down one more time. And talk about all of the stats, talk about the performances yesterday. Also, uh, a healthy chunk of the fan base out there that has predicted Quadrant to take this based on one reason, Johnny. And that's the CJ CJ. Uh, not necessarily buff, of course. The, the curse, <laughs> the buff. Everybody that's been on the CJ show or the CJ podcast has made top four. Cash was on it this week. And what is it now? Eight times in a row? Yeah, eight, like, eight out of eight uh, players who have been guests on the CJ CJ podcast have made top four in their region. So Cash trying to keep, trying to make it nine out of nine uh, right if, here, if right Cash now. If Cash does not win, this CJ is never talking to him again. Well, they've had a lot of applications from pros since that streak uh, started. A lot of pros have been applying, I've heard, to be podcast guests. <laughs> That's going to change if Cash loses today. They're all going to bail out. So we're not just, uh, it's not just Quadrant fans, it's CJ's CJ Show fans who are hoping that Quadrant could get a W today. Right now they are facing one goal down. Two minutes remaining. That's the infield pass for Cash. He's got loads of time. Oh. And you cannot give Cash that sort of time whatsoever. Two each. Blast it top corner. Yeah, that's a bang from Cash. In off the post, no doubt at all. And it's a, a rough start defensively from Quadrant, but Cash is putting it together in offense. And this is really all they need to take apart almost any team. If Cash is on, no one can stop him. Cash has been touted the last year or so. Is this now the team that's going to start taking him to those kind of levels? Uh, many of us, I can't I expect that he's capable of doing as Rezax fakes. Oh dear. Well, he tried to make his teammates look like fools, so Ixor was happy just to get rid of him. 2-2, two, two, 90 seconds left. Bump off the ceiling reset. Uh, but it does hand back over to Cassio, who's got a little bit of time. Just the back ball. Oh my. An extra touch. Why cause a little bit of chaos? It's an extremely ropey defense here from Quadrant. I'm not too impressed with their composure in front of their own goal. You know, some of these touches from Tundra are awkward to deal with, but some of them look like just normal, pretty routine saves and routine catches, routine clears. And Quadrant don't look prepared for any of them. So they've got to try and solidify here. Um, if they're going to close this one out as comfortably as well, many now people are expecting them to do so. They're, they're heavy favorites in this matchup. But don't forget, Tundra can put themselves top five in points ahead of BDS if they get a win in this oh, series. Wow. A necessary thing to do as well with Vitality hitting their stride. If Vitality can go and win this event, then they're right back in the mix. So there, there's you know a lot of teams in the pot right now fighting for that top five. Just like in North America, I think nine teams, maybe 10 teams still in the conversation up there. Look at this though, another ball just harmlessly bouncing into the box. It's going to be turned back into the Orange Jeff pretty quickly this time. A quadrant immediately, every time that Tundra attacked them, they don't have a good read on them yet. Was this the sort of game that you would like to see Tundra take whenever a team's coming in as the de facto underdog and they get that two goal lead and they are seeing mistakes from their opponents? You want them to go and convert that game because well, the default opinion is, are you going to get this sort of opportunity again? Cash off Love the that. kickoff. Is it a hat trick for Cash? Back Love one that. for Ixo. And the answer for Tundra is that two goals was not enough. Oh, this is marvelous by Cash once again. He knew Rizix was going to try and bump him. As the, the ball went over Rizix, Rizix said, Cash just dodges the bump, nonchalantly flicks it past one. And uh, yeah, double commit there on the same ball, which ended up being a flick pass rather than a flick shot from Cash. He's just done it all for his team in this game. Two goals and one assist immediately as overtime gets started. And a uh, shame for Tundra. They started off well here. They capitalized on some mistakes. 
but they've still lost the game. Yep, it was just three goals in a row and Cash with a masterclass in that game. Look at that. What a goal to get them all started off. Cash knows that he's playing good. And in a best of seven, you look towards the talisman. You look towards that player and say, man, hope you're playing well today. And then the rest of us will fall in line. Cash is certainly playing very well today indeed. But for Tundra Johnny, who is that player that you're looking for on there? So I'm going, all right, if this guy steps up, maybe more than anyone else, then the rest of the team will join him. For me, it's Razier's. I, I, th I think Razier's, well, uh, funnily enough, Razier's and Cash were two of the most talked about um, supposed free agents going into this season and the off season before uh, the massive roster shuffle changed up uh, every, pretty much every top team in Europe. Well, bar a few. Um, Cash and Razier's were two of the players early on who did not have confirmed teams. So we need to see that from Razier's. He is a, he's a solo threat and he's you know transitioned into the threes environment extremely well, coming in as player most known for his 1v1 skill but to match what Cash is currently doing is a big ask even for a player as talented as Razier's. It's also a big ask to Cash to keep playing at that level and not expect that to be the norm although another early push from Tundra. Oh good play underneath by Relating Wave. If you were to say any sort of skill the Relating Wave is better than almost anyone else that it is those challenges. He's so good at positioning you where he wants you to go and follows the old, uh, old strategy. Don't just go out of your way to win the challenge. Just don't lose it. And Relating Wave very rarely loses it, but his team has lost the first goal. It's the same as last time. Tundra 1, Quadrant 0. Yeah, and this time it's more of a mistake with the decision making rather than the mechanics from Quadrant. Um, Relating Wave was extremely slow to rotate back and if, if he's communicating that to his teammates, they should not be lunging in. We saw Cash lunge in and Ixel lunge in back to back there. Um, they could just be pressuring the ball. They're giving Relating Wave time to get back in the game or even to have Relating Wave pressure the ball in his recovery. So, you know, a bit of a mistake there um, in terms of rotation from Quadrant. Will they be able to fight back just like they did in game one? And surely this is slightly more confidence boosting for Tundra. Proof that despite the fact that you didn't take that first game, Mistakes are still coming through from Quadrant. If you hurry them and hassle them, they will get something wrong down the line. So they will at least have that to work with. The one thing they do not want to work with is this sort of offense oh. coming up against them, relating way full power. That's phenomenal for me, so absolutely phenomenal. It's less so from Tundra, who have double committed on a 50-50, which honestly didn't look like that threatening of a situation. There's no need to be sending two people at that ball. I'm always want to tell you that if there's a threatening shot, sure, double commit. If there's a really threatening pass that you're not going to be able to react to, yeah, why not? But you're getting terrible recoveries off that 50-50, and there's no need for it. Again, the net's open. This time, it's not long after a kickoff. Things are really going wrong here for both teams. Last man demoed out the play. Casio jumps. Rizik's out of the game. And it's open for cash. Yeah, both teams really could do it with tightening up that defense just communicating with each other what the intention actually is. Some sort of communication issue for the first goal by Tundra. So another one for the second one, the equalizer for Quadrant. That one you can definitely put down to just the physical game manifesting itself in a goal. But either way, there are freebies being handed around. And the match is important as this one. You do not want to be doing that, Eek, so what a good play! <laughs> That first touch was sublime. Just perfect. Absolutely perfect for me. Oh my god. Completely fakes out the initial challenge by speeding into the play, hits the break to catch the ball in a touch that really the defense are expecting to be a shot. And not only that, but he controls it in a way that he can then beat his next man to the ball as well. I mean, you don't get any better than that. It was cash in game one, it's Ixo in game number two. This is the you know the problem when teams face Tundra is. They're not just a one-man offensive threat. I mean, Relating Wave's also scored a quick up aerial in this game, but Ixo and Cash, they could both dismantle teams yeah. if they really get it together. You know, Ixo did do that. Oh my, Ixo! Ixo, he's got oh. all the way! That's unreal! Well, I asked whether or not one player's performance can bring everybody else up. Ixo <laughs> has upped the level significantly. He is 
destroying Tundra. I mean, that was a pre-flip into some kind of end of the flip flick. I mean, so unconventional there for me, so impossible to read. They pull that off midair. I mean, you can't really blame Tundra for not seeing it coming, really. Oh, hold on a second. We've got another trip on the crossfire, though. Each goes to the it's rescue. But the, the defense for Quadrant doesn't look great. They, they keep on making mistakes for absolutely no reason. But with offense like this, with Eekso popping off, with Cash, uh, you know, looking like himself, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Sizen's 4 0 predictions looking spot on so far. Shot on target. And yeah, Tundra looked like two entirely different teams, depending on what side of the field they're currently on. Thankfully for them, they're more often than not on the orange side of the field, and they have made the utmost use of that infield pass directly to Ixo. Kind of wasteful there from Tundra. As Riziz with Castillo. Oh, oh what a stop from Relating Wave. That's going to get passed back to Rizex to go again. Yeah, we've been, I think, critical, and rightfully so, of the defense we've seen from um, Quadrant up until this point. But that was a fantastic save from Relating Wave to hit his own crossbar under pressure like that, and actually to avoid a dunk at the same time. Great defensive decision making and a perfect touch. Um, and now he's doing well to dribble the ball out of defense past one, uh, almost past two. And these are the kind of things we expect to see from Relating Wave. That's why we're so critical of his defense when he does make mistakes, because he set such a high standard last season online. I think Lan's less so, but online he was unbelievable for uh, both the rosters he played for. And this is, you know, why Endpoint last season Relating Wave's roster were one of the only teams to make um, every Lan. And again, he's made a key defensive touch there. This is more like it from Relating Wave with him showing up and holding it down in defense. And I'm even more confident that Quadrant are just going to run away with this now. Yeah, you really now start to go back to that two-goal lead that Tundra had in the last game and say, you needed that. That had to be converted. Instead, it hasn't. And now Quadrant are running rough shots. Too fast. Just way too fast there from Cash. Relating Wave slots it brilliantly again. He's had a couple of good finishes in this game. Two goals to his name. Um, but really, for me, I'm looking to see those consistent touches from Relating Wave of defense, and that is what I'm most impressed with in this game from Relating Wave. I think you'll know just as well as we do that he started off the series a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit out of form, you know, with a very bad miss to give Thunder the two-goal lead in game one. Um, but he's bounced back. I think his teammates uh, popping off will probably have helped a lot with that. The, the vibes have got to be good right now for for Quadrant um, in the comms. But still, you know, we've got to give Relating Wave his credit. He's in this team to be a third man and he's doing that well but no third man on this shot it's a second goal for Tundra probably consolation more than anything unless they've got a sneaky kickoff plan I mean they need to have at least three sneaky kickoffs planned so the amount of time that they've got left and if they do well get ready for a Johnny Boy kickoff masterclass uh, right, you've, you've, got, the game. you've got a demo kickoff here easy it's, just, it's a demo <laughs> kickoff yeah they didn't do it uh, so clearly they don't know uh, any other kickoffs other than standard <laughs> or you know I'll give them the benefit of the doubt they might be saving it for the next game, maybe they didn't want to. For a game it. that maybe they can win. Yeah, exactly. You know, sometimes if you are in a precarious position like this, trailing by three with not long left, you just say, "Okay, this game's over." Um, you know, the comeback is not too reasonable. Let's just save our, our, our switch ups. Let's save our new strats for next game. Um, and they are going to call a timeout to really give that as much uh, thought as possible. So we'll see. I mean, if, if Tundra whip out some some new strategies in the next game and uh, really try and mix it up then it, I think it's fair enough to just go for the standard kickoff there. But come on, if you're playing for the win, you've got to go for a demo kickoff there or a fake. Just something. Demo kickoff, follow And then I think you go fake next. Then you do a normal one for the last kickoff of the game. Just I want to see that from these teams who are down by three, down by two with not long left in the game. Um, it's not, not what we got today. Quadrant just stopped by two. They're absolutely cruising. I mean, let's talk right now about what this event means now for Quadrant because they were a little bit of a surprise uh, last time we saw them, but they came into today uh, tied for third place at 17 points with only uh, mm. Moist Esports who were on those 17 points, KC on 20 and Oxygen over on 22 who cannot earn any more from this event as they were eliminated yesterday. So for Quadrant, a win here, an extra three points on top, you join KC. Yeah. That's such a spot to be in, you know, and you yeah. can still earn more going into tomorrow against a Vitality team who there will still rightfully be questions around. We still don't really know where the upper and lower limits of that team actually are. Oh, but they'll actually be, I believe that KC are now number one in points with the wins uh, over BD yesterday, but uh, Quadrant 
would join Moist on 20. So we, we'll have a clear top four. If Quadrant win this, we'll have a very, very clear top four in Europe. That would be Carmicorp, Oxygen, Moist, and Quadrant. And then a huge six point gap to BDS at Tundra. Um, and then potentially Vitality if they can keep on gaining uh, more points with a deep run in this event. So it's looking very much like North America. We've got four clear top four teams uh, and then a big jump to a whole bunch of teams who are very, very close together. Namely, Team Liquid and G1 on 12, Aogiri on 12 as well, actually. Um, and then you got Tundra and BDS on 14, and who knows how many Vitality can get. It's, it's turning into another like 10 horse race and uh, you know five or six teams battling for one major spot in one event. I mean, that that sounds pretty good to me. It beats the last season. We were mostly all locked up apart from two, three, two, three. Teams, oh, no, la no. Last season open. was rough, man. Last season was the one where we had like four teams capable of going and Vitality got through based on their first regional result. And then everyone just lost. Like there was so many. Yeah, they, they, all right, this team <laughs> gets so through lost. if they win. This team gets through. If they win. All right, everyone just lost. All right, we're sending Vitality. But uh, it does not seem to be the case this time around. Everyone is fighting for it. And importantly for Tundra, if they can get this figured out and they do go on to win this, they would be up there tied with Quadrant yeah. uh, over in their spot. They can drag Quadrant into that fight. But first thing before they get there, they need to drag themselves back into this series because Quadrant were a level above in that last game. Oh, look at the speed of Relating Wave here. He's definitely feeling confident now. Any. I think memory of that early miss in game one, which had him looking a bit inconsistent for the start of the series, absolutely gone, uh, buried. But timeouts, especially in Europe, have led to wins for the team that call the timeout. A very, very high percentage, much, much more than, uh, you know, you tend to see in game three, especially when a team just loses two straight games. So this is Tundra's game that they absolutely must win. I think if they lose this one, it's just it's GG. I mean, Cash actually hit the target there. Um, obviously, with that tight angle, not a lot of pace able to be generated. It's going to be saved, but it's not the way Cassie reacted to it. He's like, oh my goodness, that ball's coming at me pretty quickly. Let me just make sure I pop that into a safe location. Oh, Cassio looking just to get rid of this ball for now. It's uh, actually been a better start than usual for Quadrant of all the yeah. teams that we could have talked out here because Tundra did get the early leads previously. Oh, Maybe dear. that just sort of oh, angered dear. Quadrant previously, but yeah, that was a little bit of a kerfuffle in the midfield. And yeah, that was, uh, I think, two players calling that they've got it, and then they both listened to each other, so nobody <laughs> nobody went for it, and uh, a bit of a collision as well. We've seen, you know, that plague uh, top teams in the past, even on oh. the world stage, thinking most uh, vividly to G2. Winter Major Grand Final, first series, Game 7 uh, last season. The exact same thing happened. Two players called that they're going to go for the ball, and then they both uh, stopped going for it because the other person called it. So, you know, that's why double commits are sometimes better than just oh, that's going. So good. That's a great touch indeed. And it is Ixo once again, who is just proven to be too much for Tundra to handle. And this is the only sort of playstyle you can do if you trust the people at the back, despite the issues that Quadrant have had defensively. Ixo was not rushing to get back into position, he held the boost knowing that something might come over his way. He's able to cut rotation, pop the ball back into the air, and that is as simple as you like for Cash to finish off, although maybe a little bit worrying when you see the ball bounce off unchallenged from your backboards. Quadrant up against it at the moment. But for the first time this series, it is Tundra that have got to get themselves back into it after conceding the first goal. And they do it. Do they have the firepower to do it? Or is Tundra just going to really start to stretch these advantages. And as Ixo off the backboard has support. And oh, wow. there's a bit of a collision. Cash will be by himself. Ixo and Relating Wave still trying to get back. But Cash is still there. Oh. And Cash has been beaten. And it's Razier's with the solo play onto Cash. Slow air dribble. I think Cash is expecting that one to go a bit lower. But look how it. Razier's has managed to air roll underneath the ball there to pop the final touch. Uh, not just over the top of Cash, but also a little bit past his challenge, just sneaking it uh, into the roof of the net. But you know, that was clearly a mistake there from Tundra again in defense. Ixo offloading the ball, he thinks he's going to keep air dribbling, Relating Wave calls him off it, and Ixo doesn't listen. He's probably thinking, I th did Relating Wave really just call me off this? I must be hearing things. I'm going to keep going. Obviously, Relating Wave wouldn't call me off an air dribble. I'm the first man. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, positions are fluid in Rocket League. Relating Wave trying to get stuck in there, trying to get involved. 
had a uh, clear line at the ball, um, but Eatswood just didn't didn't leave it for him. It screams to me a team that wants that chip on their shoulder and the idea that we might only praise them coming out of this game doesn't sit well. We have to make some mistakes. We have to give people something to complain about because everything else has been brilliant. They're scoring 8 out of 10s, 9 out of 10s, 10 out of 10s, and then they give up open nets and double commits <laughs> and whatever else, and Cash is going to be the last one back. We are just in full demo city right now. Brazil. He was going for chain bumps, actually, in the back corner there is an extreme commitment uh, from Relink Wave. He's really stepped up the aggression in this game. I think trying to um, get involved more in the offense. He saw the goals from Cash and the plays from Ixo in games one and two, and he's thinking, I want a piece of that, actually. You know, I got two goals in the last game, but I want to be the guy playmaking. I want to be the guy creating these chances. Not just the, the finisher, but I, I kind of want to just see Relating Wave sitting in, in defense. It's not that I don't think he can make plays uh, going forward, but I've just loved what he's done in, in the tail end of game two, just completely locking everything up and giving each and Cash the freedom to do their thing. So, um, you know, it, it's, as good as it is to see Relating Wave have the confidence to advance, and I do, I do want to see him commit to that third man position and let his teammates cry out on uh, aerials and uh, solo plays. Good block. That cash yeah. wants to get. Cash doesn't yeah. hit anything but top <laughs> 90. Like it yeah. is top yeah. bins or nothing at all. I mean, uh, this is why I want to see Ixo and, and Cash on the ball as much as possible. Ixo again just takes everyone out of the game. Air dribble pass one, 50 50, right in the middle of the box and puts it in a spot that the def last defender can never, ever get to before Cash does. And this is, uh, it's going to keep happening if, if they've got space. Even if they don't, I mean, they're making it for themselves right now. Well, at the moment, Quadrant has not been perfect, but offensively, it's been as close as you can get. Tundra needs something to end this game. Pass through his ears, it skies over his head. They now need to get the ball off the worst person here. Relating wave, you're not getting it off him from there. Instead, it does drop down, and you are going to get 3 to 0. I do agree. You want everyone. <laughs> Say again? Timeout buff? Nope, not this time. Uh, so I mean, I could see, um, you know, Quadrant taking a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you go on, I, re I you really, really want. I do want to see that. I want to see a team w win like a third game in this situation and just call a timeout. And I don't know. It's not happened yet. And I'm genuinely shocked with some of the personalities we've got in Rocket League. <laughs> you know, you you got respect to though. You know, they they're just trying to speed run this, just uh, get rid of Tundra as fast as possible, um, and really just. Not, not fully secure themselves. Obviously, you do need more uh, points than Quadrant will accumulate from this win to make it guaranteed, make it to the major. But um, the fact that all the teams below them are kind of mm -hmm. trading wins and trading points, it makes it almost a lock for Quadrant if they can just win. If they win the series, they're essentially into the major already. Um, barring some crazy fallout where they you know, go 0-3 in Swiss next time. And that's combined with a perfect storm of two teams below them, uh, both doing really well. Um, of course, they, yeah. they don't want to leave it up to chance, though. I mean, they, they've got a favorable side of the bracket here, looking over the other side with Moist and Carmen Corp. They've got Vitality, who, you know, I think could make a run and win this as well. Um, you don't want to count out them. So one step at a time for Quadrant. I think that they, they've clearly got the edge here. They, they are the better team today. Um, even with a few mistakes, they're still levels above Tundra. I think what's important with me when I'm watching Quadrant right now is it looks like they have a win condition. You know, for a lot oh. of teams that we've ever seen, we always can turn around and just go, once this happens, nobody beats them. And right now, Tundra seem to have that. They have something that they can replicate, that they can yeah. do tournament after tournament, game after game. That is massive, especially in a region like this where you need to put those performances back to back together. Heck, if you need to go to, a, to big tournaments, go into LAN events, you need something that you look towards and say, look, as long as we do this, no one can, no one can beat us. Quadrant have that, and they yeah. know it. it. It's kind of, I think it's well illustrated. I mean, Oxygen didn't do too well this event. They're, they didn't make top eight, but it's a well illustrated concept with uh, the, you know Archie's career. Archie, for a long time, felt like he was the one player in a lot of the rosters that he was on who could really be that troublemaker for the other team. Um, and now that he's got Jorias alongside him, he feels like he doesn't have the pressure to show up every single series, because if he's having a slightly off day, it's fine. Jorias will be there to pick up the pieces and 1v3 uh, the entire other team. But that's what we're looking at here with Quadrant. You've got Ixo and Cash kind of uh, 
taking the pressure off one another um, and just popping oh, off. And different times in the league, we've nearly picked the three. Oh, we deserved it! <laughs> yeah, that's a great save, but he, that's the second time this game, really. We've had a very tight angle shot denied at close range. Right, we're just like, well, I guarantee you right now, that was Kasharik, so they were just not even saved it. It'll be just let in. But yeah, I mean, the best way I can sort of describe what I'm seeing from Quadrant right now is that these are two players that you've got from Ixo and uh, Cash, the way they are playing, that can win you series. And even if that's not happening, as we've seen, there were times last season where Endpoint were not fully clicking and players like Relating Wave kept them in that series, bought the time for oh. the wheels to start to turn. Although Relating Wave, maybe not the best at it for this series. He's had a couple of those sort of occasions. Yeah, they, I think he had a good backup plan there when he realized he wasn't getting the, the touch that he initially wanted. Of course, he doesn't want to, he, he's not calling back pass when he jumps for that. I think it's, a, it's definitely an adaptation, but yeah, he didn't really nail the back pass either. It ended up bouncing pretty dangerously instead of uh, harmlessly into the back corner. So yeah, not the, not the best touch there for him. Really, we've got a bit too pressed up uh, on the field. The ball did go over his head. It's gone over Cash instead as well. That's the miss. He dives down and saves it and manages to offload to Relating Wave as well. <laughs> How about that for a recovery? How oh, so on the counter. Got Cash starting to move forward. The infield back pass. Rizek just getting away from the danger for the time being. On once again, Ixo buys the time. Dares anybody to come towards him, but he is now out of boost. The ball does pop up. Riziz. Back to the midfield once again. Nil nil. The most stable game that we have seen so far. Tundra needs to get through this and then do it three more times afterwards. Really? Oh! oh! Oh, we deserved it! Oh, we <laughs> deserved it so much! Perfect first touch from Relating Wave. And not a moment too late with the reset as well. Just sneaks it past the last defender. Gets a nice little 1v3 play himself. It's really been the Cash and Ixo show for the most part, but Relating Wave's had his moments. Quadrant are going to need him if they're going to go all the way in this tournament. They have uh, definitely got enough firepower to, you know, I think they can beat Tundra with just two of their three players playing well, but other teams in Europe, you're going to need all three, and that's what we want to see from Relating Wave. Absolute class with the control. The only goal in game four as well. So, quieter one from Ixo and Cash, I would see. Back to the corner again. So, on to Castillo, who's gonna delay. Go okay. underneath! And Quadrant are gonna need that little bit more. That's a phenomenal play from Castillo. He's got a bit of help on that one with Risk 6 chasing, relating wave into the net and really making the save difficult for him, but. Well played by Castillo. We've seen Relating Wave and Castillo now both stepping up and making the big mechanical play. And we've talked about three players being the guys to do that in this lobby. So Cash and Raziers. Now two of the other players getting involved as well. And that's going to really alleviate the pressure on Raziers, I believe. You know, right now, every time he gets the ball, he's probably thinking, I've got to score this. I've got to outplay two people. I've got to do something huge or else we're just going to lose this. But Castillo proving why time and time again, he is consistently there in the EU top eight. Midfield yet again, Ixo will see his shot blocked. Took two players to do it. All the block back to Ixo once again. First touch did not go quite as well this time around. Tundra clawing oh. for their tournament lives, but that mistake doesn't help. Rizek gives them some breathing room. Tundra not out just yet. Even if they do go on to win this, you wonder, is this something they can replicate? Now one more time, Castillo. Not gonna go any further than that. Tundra are gonna have their last time, maybe oh overtime, my. or maybe oh. the reset. Either way, we have overtime. That's uh, something Raziers is definitely capable of, so crucial, absolutely crucial that he was closed down there. That would have been a dangerous position, especially on zero seconds. Cash with the first real chance to no T. He's going the distance. Rizix on his recovery. Able to muscle him into the corner. 
Lots of cuts of rotation here, catching both teams off guard and forcing possession to change hands quickly. Ixo actually finds himself in a position where he might have been able to redirect that, but Ashes Touch went past him a bit too quickly. Patience from Quadrant. They don't want to overextend or extend right now. They don't want to allow Tundra to win a game at the back of an unforced error. And you see the amount of pressure that Quadrant send every time. Cash is still around. Got enough on the keeper. Relating Wave does not go all in. Very much in line with his role just to evaluate. Is this worth going in for? Who will it be? to either keep the series going or to extend it through to game number five. Resist, heavy touch. Castillo's got to try and just scramble to keep it going. Tantra were a little far forward, actually, so they do have to move all the way back to their back corner. Running wave, takes his time. Swipes at one, wipes out a goalkeeper. Ixo looks to set. And as you said earlier on, Johnny, it is a much more defensive stance from Quadrant. They don't want to give up a freebie. Yeah, they're making sure not to overcommit right now. That's what Tundra are looking for. They're trying to bait in Quadrant. Um, hit them on the counter attack. Quadrant are well aware of that fact. Just prioritize the outward rotation on every attack and move that they make. Um, always having two back is the key against what Tundra are trying to do right now. Do Tundra have the firepower to get through that more defensive stance from Quadrant? I'm not sure. If they do, I feel like the longer this goes on, the more likely we are to see a big peak from Quadrant. And hold that thought. Here comes the shot. This Razier is denied by the crossbar oh, and Rizix likewise. Speed. Had the rebound and just put it too high. How long is it going to take for Tundra to get another one? Razier goes for it. Oh my oh. goodness, Cash had to be so aware of that one. Out of nowhere from the backboard. And we keep going, Cash leaves it for each, so couldn't go underneath the goalkeeper. You know, boost management has been a bit of a struggle for Quadrant at times. Not as fluid, not as speedy as they were in the previous games this series, but oh, they're still creating chances. You know, that's not been a problem at all in any of the games we've seen today. Lingwave almost connecting with a bump there on Razier's. Instead, Razier's beats him to it, gets the offload to Cassio. Cash just goes right through him. If he's not even there, he's going to try and go past everybody here. Key challenge connects from Tundra. They have to deny Cash and each of these 1v2s that they're so well known for. Cash goes past yet another player, and it's wide That's open. It. Can he get there? Cash with the shot, and it's in for the sweep. Sizen got it right. Quadrant, another top four. Tundra have to settle for quarterfinals for a second weekend in a row. Vitality will await. Quadrant showing that the last regional was just the beginning. They've done it. They've got the sweep. And now, Johnny, they are in a position where with the results going the way they have today, if they win everything tomorrow, if they take the regional, they qualify for Rotterdam. But at the way that they're going at the moment, that would just be speeding up the process. They are everything that they say they are. Yeah. And a well, well-deserved win. And here's the best thing, Johnny. They can obviously be better. We know they can be better. Yeah, they're, they're, they're locked 20 points now total. And of course, all the teams in the Fall Invitation will start on two, so 22 points. I mean, the magic number is somewhere around 23. So, you know, one win in Swiss next, next event uh, probably puts them into the major with just how things are going for them. That's, I think, the, the, the big series that Quadrant needed to make. They knew how much this meant. They're taking out one of their biggest rivals. If Tundra win this, they tie Quadrant in points. Instead, there's a six-point gap. Massive oh, gap. I love it. <laughs> what a reaction I love it. Cash at the end there. I mean, he was talked about last season as one of the best players who didn't make a major. Well, I think that's about to change. I mean, Cash is clearly coming with a chip on his shoulder for this season, and Every time we get a player like that, they tend to show exactly why they knew something that everyone else clearly didn't. But for this one, everyone seems to know. Everyone seems to be getting on board this now. Quadrant is a team to be feared. And for Tundra, this ne I, I'm going to be keeping eyes on them because if, if next week or two weeks from now, actually, I'm sorry, um, is going to be interesting enough, that race for the final spot, 
just oh, yeah. got even juicier because it oh, seems yeah. like the pack has got away, but only the top four. That fifth spot, oh, that's really, really difficult to decide. So let's wrap today up. Leaf, over to you. Yeah, again, I, I think you're right, Shogun, that uh, at this point, the, there's a lot of confidence from the team and from everyone else watching. The Quadrant definitely are in a position now to s disrupt those top teams and say, no, we're we're on our way there to sit with uh, with all of you guys, Cole. Yeah, I feel like we're seeing the evolution of Quadrant right now. They came onto the scene, not they didn't come onto the scene, they, they started playing a couple of weeks ago at the start of the season, and they were defending their way to victory. They were called an offensive team, I think it was in Archie's interview. Um, there was a case of them dominating their opponents, being the better team and being able to deal with that pressure. And then we had in game four, James, back to their usual performance of sitting in the goal and you just knew they weren't going to concede in that overtime. Well, I, I mean, I, I think this was a, a big test defensively, mentally, all around for Quadrant and they passed with flying colors. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, the thing that stings for me so much is I, I finally put myself out there for Tundra and Cassidy. You know, I did it. And, and Sizen, <laughs> he just came on and said, yeah, it's going to be a 4-0. And it was. So, I, I, you know, just fire me out. Working on it and email sent. But no, it was, again, I, I appreciate the stance that you took for them. It was nice to see a little bit of fight at the end of them. But obviously, Cole Tundra has a bit of work coming into the next regional. Yeah, completely. I mean, they are still on the cusp. A couple of quarterfinals results is a massive start for them. The question is, are they able to just do what Quadrant have done and break through into being a regular semi-final team? And when there are so many teams in Europe that are knocking on that door, you have to be able to make a semi-final in order to make it here. I was impressed with Razias. Uh, I was also impressed with Cassia, who got a lovely flip reset in that one, but it just wasn't quite enough for them. Quadrant, a brilliant team, and they're showing it. Quadrant uh, flip reset, I honestly want to say was incredible. So there you go. That was amazing, Cassie. Well, we got Corelli standing by with a relating wave to talk about the match. Thank you very much, Aleev. Yeah, uh, Mr. Relating Wave, Quadrant Relating Wave. Look at you guys coming out here, finishing or sitting at top four currently. Sizen said uh, this one was going to be a 4-0 for you guys. Uh, I think the expectation was that Quadrant was going to win. Uh, how do you approach a team like Tundra in the with their play style being so defensive? Um, we just played our game, really. Like, Tundra, no disrespect to them, but I, I, I don't know what to say. Like, it was a bit a bit disappointing from them, really. But um, it, it's just more the fact that we need to keep our game style against them, and luckily we did. So, I mean, what was so disappointing, I guess, about Tundra? Was it the execution of game style, or was it just game plan in general? Uh... It was just more like they didn't really make the most of their opportunities and we, we felt like we could have played so much better than we actually did and we still swept, which I thought, yeah, fair enough to us, but I, I don't know. It was just a weird game. Well, you guys aren't really used to losing here uh, in this regional. You guys have only dropped a couple games now in uh, four series. There's three teams left, uh, not including you guys, in the bracket. Vitality, who you'll be playing next. Moist uh, Moist or KC on the other side of the bracket. Out of those three teams, who do you feel like is the biggest threat towards your Quadrant squad? Um, I think, I mean, KC is, surely. Like, they got grand finals last time. They beat Moist. Moist uh, beat him again, but I think KC look really good at the moment. Vitero honestly looks like the best player in the world. Mm, that's the, uh, I think the second time actually back to back interviews now I think people are talking about KC it seems like the team uh, to beat at the moment uh, talk to me about your team a little bit this this cash duo uh, cash EXO duo seems really strong offensively they were topping the leaderboards in offensive stats you were at the top with assists feeding them the ball uh, when you guys put this team together did they always click like this or was this something that you guys had to build on uh, we had to build on it. Like at the start, it was very all over the shop because there was a lot of days where we couldn't scrim. But um, no, honestly, the duo that is Cash and Ixo, I Honestly, I'm enjoying the show at the moment. I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah, I think Johnny and uh, Shogun, they were looking for you to hit some of those shots. Uh, you got your flip reset in there, but uh, you had a couple of great opportunities there you put away. And obviously your contributions are, are massive as well. I talked about the assist category. You guys are you've been feeding them. Uh, nicely. I want to move our microscope over to Vitality. What's the relating wave uh, take on Vitality at the moment? Uh, Vitality is a massive question mark. Like, they looked horrible and then they looked like really good again. They swept um, EG, who I did not think was going to happen. Who knows? They could play incredible tomorrow or they could do nothing tomorrow. 
Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. We have to get to tomorrow. We're li- relating wave. Thank you for coming on, man. Any other uh, shout outs or anything you want to say before uh, we let you go? Uh, shout out my teammates in Quadrant. Love everyone here. And that's it, really. All right. Thanks for coming on, Relating Wave. Hope you have a good night, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Relating Wave, again, uh, probably happy. We, we heard that, too, that Quadrant, James, is is in a position that they can clinch Rotterdam. It's in their own hands. They need a regional win. But obviously, on the other side, K Corp's looking for the same thing. But it yeah, is nice. they are. Are you not going to say hands. anything about how politely disrespectful Relating Wave was? I was going to get to that. Goodness I was going to get to that. <laughs> but we had the bracket up. To be fair... Who James, cares I, about the bracket? We just had that interview. He's like, I mean, right now, James. Frankly, Tundra was disappointing, and Vitality could do nothing. <laughs> we've, we, 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 we've, actually still got the, we've still got that camera in our preview, and I'm just watching Snasky give Relating Wave a little wave. They're saying hello to each other. There's clearly such a good team dynamic right now for Quadrant, which is always easy when you're winning, but it seems the vibes are high in that team, which is, you know, fair play to them. To be fair, I feel like that... that d- d- at initial disrespect for the team came from a place of concern for the team. Of he wanted them Did to it? do better. Uh, okay, right. he wanted he them to do better, right? Like, yeah. he, he, well, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I felt bad. I'm not even on Tundra. <laughs> and when he said he was disappointed in Tundra, I, even I felt bad at that moment. Uh, that's fantastic. Well, let's. Uh, you guys want to know what's going on tomorrow? Obviously, we only have three matches left. Three. Uh, matches before we have uh, a crown champion for the fall cup and they'll be playing in this order our grand finals obviously last but we have to find out who's going there starting with k corp and moist k corp again playing for their clinch if they can get a regional win quadrant doing the same in their match against vitality either way cole we got good games tomorrow I mean, I can't believe it. A rematch of the last semifinals, K-Corp versus Moist. It seems that these two are just destined to play each other time and time again. This time around in the Swiss, it was Moist that beat K-Corp, so they've had the last laugh. But it never seems to last long for either of these two teams. All the storylines of the swap, Vatira and Astral. It's just so much to look to there. And then the question that Relating Wave himself put upon Vitality. Which version of Vitality are we going to see? James, I feel like we've been saying which version of Vitality will we see for about a year and a half now. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's true, but just like uh, when they took down uh, BDS and RLCSX, mm. who knows? I don't know. Maybe, maybe they could. Maybe they can win it all tomorrow. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I think Relating Way was very much accurate on that. This Vitality team is a bit of a question mark, but I think the one thing that people will accept is that Vitality does have the ability to win it all if they are having everything click so and we yeah, it's gonna be interesting a week ago <laughs> we wouldn't have said that before this tournament began it's crazy how quickly it swings over here in europe i just want to get a couple final thoughts from you guys because we are coming down to the end of day two here we're going to send it off so we get rested up for day three championship sunday so now just looking at the landscape of europe or just this regional in general final thoughts starting with james and then cole you know i i just think europe <sighs> Thank you for being so entertaining. I, I mean, it hurts sometimes to see teams like Oxygen who win it all, not even make it. But it, uh, on the other end, it's entertainment. So thank you, Europe, for entertaining Amen. once more. Yeah, it has been a particularly entertaining regional so far, I think. I, I cannot wait, particularly for the Carmine Corp uh, versus Moist semifinals. And I also can't wait for the same semifinals. We'll inevitably get in the Invitational as well in a couple of weeks' time. So mark your calendars, everybody. Well, we have a lot of exciting matches tomorrow, uh, three to be precise, and Europe's definitely been delivering on the European Fall Cup. So day three, Championship Sunday, tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. 10.30 Eastern uh, for pre-show. It might be a bit later uh, time change, so don't quote me. You'll, You'll see it somewhere. But join us for the game tomorrow. Keep the tab open, and we'll see you then.
Thank you.